What's up, 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 what is up? How are y'all doing today? It is Friday, and that's, y'all already know what that means. That means we are about to get it in tonight. Oh, man, I'm telling y'all, I am so, so excited. There is so much for us to talk about tonight. I am very, very excited just because, whoo, man, listen, DC is on the run right now, okay? DC done dropped the bomb, okay? They dropped the bomb on us, baby, and we have so much news. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So, yes, I am here uh, to break all that stuff down. We're going to the vast majority of today's uh, chat, we are going to talk about um, the announcement from James Gunn, um, all the news coming from um, uh, DC Studios. Uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on like what it means. I'm going to give you my thoughts on like, you know, what I'm afraid of and what's, you know, what, what I'm excited for, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to get through all of that stuff. And then, of course, we got some other news we're going to get through before we get to that as well. Um, but, uh, just as a quick reminder for you all, um, once again, there is not going to be a live for, um, this Monday. So Monday, we usually do a live in case you didn't know, we do a live for, uh, a, re a reaction for the last of us. Um, unfortunately I will not be able to go live, uh, to cover episode four of the last of us. I'm going to do my best to still record something for you all. Um, however, um, like I said, I won't be able to go live, uh, mainly because I might be watching a little movie that day I, uh, around that time. I don't know. It ain't nothing too crazy. I'm just, you know, I might, I might just watch a little movie, you know, just a little, a little tiny movie. Just, can y'all see it? Oh, can y'all, I don't know if y'all can see it, but anyway, make sure, make sure that you stay tuned because you might. You might even see my little tiny reaction to a little tiny movie coming out soon. No big deal. No big deal. So anyway, <clears throat> you already know uh, Kang Gang is in effect, full effect. But uh, we got so much stuff that we got to cover tonight. So let me uh, see who's in the building. Let's say what's up. Uh, and uh, then we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, by the way, let me just say real, real quick um shout out to my man terrence um i'm sorry if i didn't get a chance to thank you last time brother uh i appreciate you for the ten dollar cash app you sent uh i think it was last week and i didn't get a chance uh to talk about it so thank you so much for that sir i really really appreciate you uh as always but let's go ahead and see who's in the building tonight and i know people are joining in later uh we will get to them as well thank you so much Kicking it off, Rim 17, we got the Mod Squad in the building, Top Vet, you already know what it is. Get those likes up. If you like what you see, like what you hear, or if you don't, just hit the like button anyway. We appreciate it. Um, but thank you so, so much for uh, putting in the work for you and the rest of the Mod Squad. I really, really appreciate y'all. Um, right behind her is another Top Vet right in the building, Deborah Rodriguez. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so, so much for making it out. Really, really appreciate you. Come on now. We got back to back. I love it. I love it. Top supporters in the building. My man, Jason Rodriguez, right there. What's going on, sir? Thank you so, so much for being here. Really appreciate you as well. My man, Dex of Reason is here. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Rick and Morty. You know, I was, I was thinking about covering the Rick and Morty thing, but here's the thing. Well, first of all, I don't really watch uh, Rick and Morty. Um, I think I might have watched maybe two episodes. Hilarious. It, they, they were hilarious. I just never got around to like actually watching them continuously, right? Um, but when I did hear the news about the uh, co-creator who um, I think he had like a domestic abuse um, charge against him, I just didn't see very much to talk about because they dropped him. <laughs> you know, like... They 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 filed the charge on him. Adult Swim was like, "Peace, you out of here." And they about to recast him. Uh, you know the voices of the characters. Justice is served. Unlike other certain properties or studios who tolerate people that have a litany of charges, that's something worth talking about. I think. Um, but when justice is served, or if the process is working, I'm like, ah, good. All right, just, Rick and Morty is not canceled. They're gonna keep going. 
the guy who did the bad thing is getting his just desserts. Cool. So uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm not really covering it, even though I know this was kind of covering it. Um, but yeah, that's I just didn't see the 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 need to do more. But thank you so much, Dex. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see. We got blurred uh, forever. Thank you so, so much. Appreciate you for being here. Uh, Robert Brown, what's going on? How you doing? Uh, shout out to the replay gang, by the way. Appreciate y'all. We got 60 plus reviews in the building. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Another top quality vet in the building. Ms. Harper, always a pleasure. Thank you so, so much for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. We got Natalie in the building. No, Natalie's on replay gang. All good. Thank you. You go kick that and stare master's tail. Oh, I hate that stare master. I think I... Oof, it's been a while. It's been a long while. I think I used to give it about six minutes, and that was about it. You know, that was I gotta go back and work on that myself. Uh, let's see who else we got. My man, just my opinion reviews. Y'all make sure that you go follow this brother. You can find him in my favorite channel list. Um, and stay tuned. You might see some other good stuff coming up. You never know. That's why you gotta go follow just to see what happens. We be we just surprise y'all with stuff. Y'all never know. Uh, who else we got? Let's see. Chill Spot's in the building. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Another My Squad in the building. Top vet, Chris and Pratt. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so, so much for being here. And y'all go ahead and subscribe if you are new. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Leandra, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you. Uh, John Robinson, hello, sir. Good to see you. We got namesake in the building. What's going on, sir? How you doing? Uh, let's see. Shauna. <clears throat> hello hello thank you so much oh you on the replay that's all good hit that replay squad up uh really appreciate that who else we got uh lee oh my gosh thank you so much lee for that contribution it's so so nice of you let's see Emonites uh and kang gang you already know what it is uh out celebrating anniversary with my love happy anniversary to you too uh looking forward to the smackdown majors uh we'll be dishing out this month recast the child a long time first time Kang Gang in the building. Malice P, thank you so, so much for that. Hope you enjoy your uh, anniversary. Um, make it a special night. Enjoy yourself. Uh, you know, hey, look, Valentine's Day is coming up also. Man, do you have to double dip? Do you have to, like, celebrate the anniversary and then Valentine's Day at the same time? Listen, all I know is my my wallet just gasped if that was my case. You know, I, 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 got, a, I got a couple months between me and the Mrs. Anniversary and, and Valentine's Day, so I got, I got a little breathing room. Oh, I couldn't do it if it was back to back. I'd be like, look, you know, uh, you just gonna have to get a two for one or something. I don't know. Something. <laughs> uh, let's see who else we got in here. My man Gray's in the building. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Another back to back vet with my man Didier. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Uh, let's see. Carvan. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, Maurice. What's going on? Thank you so much for being here. Calo. What's up? Talented one. I see you. Kimmy, hello, hello. My man Eric, what's up? What's up? Minister Crush is here. What's going on? Uh, Rhonda, hello, hello. Treese, how you doing? My man Gilberto's here. Hello, hello. Pamela, what's up? How are you? Uh, Kenny's back. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. My man Nelson V is here as well. Thank you so much. Mama J is in the building. What's going on, ma'am? Good to see you. Of course, we got Zia Latrice. Hello, ma'am. Always a pleasure to have you back. Uh, my man, the last of Bo is here. Good to see you. Thank you so much for the mod squad in the building. Soto's back. Good to see you too. Uh, who else we got? Corey, what's going on? How you doing? Uh, Akinsi, hello, hello. Good to see you too. Reese is back. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's see. Edward, I see you. Uh, let's see. Akuri, hello, hello. Tyra, how you doing? Always a pleasure. Chops, what's going on? Wilbur, I see you. My man Sean is back. Good to see you. Junya, what's going on? Thank you so much. Peaches, I see you. Jesus or Jesus. Uh, Sim, thank you so much, both of y'all, for being here. Lisa, hello. I'm trying to go fast so I can get some people in. Portia, what's up? Kev, how you doing? Uh, my man Eric Shaw is back in the building. And shout out to everyone that has made it out tonight or if you're about to make it out tonight. I really appreciate you. Uh, one way or another thank you thank you so so much uh wait wait okay there we go uh thank you so my goodness pamela thank you so much for this contribution hey e-man and e-fam tomorrow's my birthday okay i wanted to send some love your way and say thanks to you and everyone for the lively chat i lost my partner of 12 years a couple months ago oh y'all keep my uh, spirit lifted my good pamela so so sorry for your loss um that is tough i mean 12 years is oh, so long 
Um, so definitely condolences to you, friends, family, and everyone affected to that. Um, and at the same time, happy pre-birthday. Um, I am here wishing you the best, greatest, most exciting, fun, fulfilling, satisfying birthday that you could have up until this point. So happy pre-birthday to you. And thank you so, so much for that very, very generous uh, contribution. Really means a lot. Uh, so shout out to you and yours. Thank you. Uh, who else we got? Uh, da, 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 da. My man, Matthew Collins. What's going on, brother? Glad to be able to actually see you live. I have my left eye fixed uh, and I've been loving being able to see again. Congratulations. Hey, there's nothing better than being able to see. Trust me, because I'm blind as a bat. So I already know what you mean. Uh, love the shirt, brother. Kang, dang all, Kang gang all day. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. Uh, you already know. Listen, we was Kangs, baby. You, you, y'all know the deal. We was Kangs, baby. You know. Listen, I, I try to tell y'all something too. I want y'all to understand. I am not officially super excited for Ant Man three. I'm just not. Okay. Ain't I? And to be honest with you, I don't know if anyone else is either. However. I am here for my brother, Jonathan Majors, as Kang. That's it. If you couldn't tell by now, the only thing I'm looking for in this movie is for the Kang gang stomp and for Kang to just, 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 just be bigger than Thanos. I want him to just be bigger than Thanos and for, for this black man to just dominate the MCU like we've never seen before. That's all I'm looking for. It's Black History Month. So I can do that, okay? I don't care. But my goodness, that is, oh, hold on, wait a minute. Stop the presses. We got the misses. The qu listen, I told you we was Kangs, and they go the Queen, okay? That's the Queen right there. We was Kangs, but that's the Queen, all right? Thank you so much. I love the fact that my missus is here. She is um my everything. Uh, so I am so so glad to have my partner in crime. My right hand woman um in the building thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you thank you i just just love it when you when i could just see your face on here that's all i i just love it uh you might be sleep she could be sleep too because i know she'd be knocked out after work <laughs> you know i'll be trying to tell you being a teacher whoo yo don't envy that at all uh whoa oh kiki come on now kiki Woo! coming through can gang all day and beyonce going on tour listen listen Listen, first of all, thank you for that. Um, and my goodness, these Beyonce tickets that I I have never heard so much ruckus and commotion about pre-registration, not to get on the waiting list, not to buy the ticket, but to pre-register to get in the lottery that might get you in the waiting list just to maybe kind of sort of get the Beyonce tickets that you might not be able to afford. I ain't never heard this before in my life. Even Taylor Swift. What happened to Taylor Swift? Her ticket sold out and they went to bots and all this other stuff or whatever, and they canceled the show, okay? I remember, I, I told y'all, we went and got the Janet Jackson tickets. Woo, let me tell you, that was an arm and a leg right there. But uh, th th it wasn't as bad as this from what I'm hearing with this. Woo, I'm hearing people selling their houses. Not they mortgage pay, they whole houses just to be able to afford because nobody knows the real price. And if you are out there, by the way, don't be going to them third party sites looking at those fake tickets that they're trying to overprice and sell you on. People out here selling their whole cars just to buy one Beyonce ticket. Whew, it's a nightmare out there. It's crazy. Um, but hey, all power to whoever's able to get them. Um, because I I got a feeling, man. You that resale value is going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts. I remember. Woo wee. Man, good luck. Good luck to you, Kiki. If you get it, let us know if you do. Um, and if anybody else has gotten them or if anyone else is um, trying to get them, if you're in line to get them, let me know. I'm just curious to see what the uh, if, if anybody's even successful, you know. Uh, but thank you so, so much for that. B, what's going on? Just wanted to support. Love your channel. Oh, B, thank you so much. That is so, so kind of you. I really, really appreciate that. 
um really do thank you so so much for that uh sending that love right back to you uh let's see what else we got um okay i think we're all caught up uh so let's kind of get through all the little the little news you know from the week you know this look this is the stuff that ain't make no ripples ain't nobody really checking for it but you know we gonna cover it just to say that we did you know uh so first up we got tomb raider uh update with that now if in case you recall um or if you forgot we uh not too long ago there was this big debate or this big bidding war for um i think it was mgm that was owning it or something like that with tomb raider but basically everybody was trying to get a piece of tomb raider um and what ended up happening was um uh amazon won the bid amazon got the rights to uh tomb raider which means the last tomb raider that you saw kiss it goodbye is done they're going to reboot it's going to be a whole new property starting all over However, now we got a little bit more detail as to what that actually means and what it's going to look like. And from the sounds of it, it looks like Amazon is going to try, now that they have the rights, they're going to try and make this a Marvel-like franchise. So here's what some of that means. So um, they just bought the rights. Uh, they, ma they made a deal to buy Tomb Raider. Um, and of course, they have a new TV series. And they're going to have at least one video game as well. They say here that the idea is to build out a connected world of Tomb Raider with the video game, TV series, and film all interconnected in a fashion akin to what Marvel has already accomplished. Okay. And they also says uh, one source with knowledge of the pack uh, described it as being the largest commitment at Amazon after Lord of the Rings. Woo! Wow. Now, uh, let's not forget. Uh, remember the 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 Lord of the Rings, Power of the Rings, Rings of Power, whatever they call it. That's like one of the largest acquisitions, the largest cost for a TV series, right? Um, and and just to have the rights to Lord of the Rings is huge. So if this is coming in second. I feel like Amazon's about to do something with this. It feels like Amazon is not going to just say like, okay, we just going to make another video game. Like it sounds like if you putting your money where your mouth is, you about to give us something with quality. It sounds like it. So I I'm 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 a little shocked that they paid this much money, you know, cuz what does it say here? Hold on. It says by comparison Amazon is estimated to have spent 250 million on the rights alone to Lord of the Rings. Okay. And that deal covering a multiple season show, The Rings of Power as well. Okay. So like 250, 250, which is still, it's still no Trump change. Two, a quarter, a quarter billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Okay. For a TV show, for the rights to do that, they, that means they could do spinoff at the spinoff at the, they could do whatever they want. So, um, I will say that at first I was not terribly uh, like interested in this. However, and I want to ask you guys this, if you've played the game, because I don't see myself going out and buying a Tomb Raider game, but if you have played the game, are you a little bit more optimistic that they're going to have a TV show and a movie all connect? Because I think people might be underestimating the power of the whole Marvel formula or whatever that they want to call it. Because when you think about it from a business perspective, if you have things connect, that's a great way to have your audience invested and maybe even trapped. Because if you have, let's say, a great TV show and maybe a great video game, people are going to go watch that movie. And even if the movie sucks, they're not going to go nowhere because the game and the and the TV show are so good. Or if the movies are really good and the game is great and the TV show is not, they're not going to go nowhere because they're still going to go get everything else. So it's actually a pretty, I think, it's actually a pretty good way to keep people invested by attacking all these different sections, you know, whether it's the video game, TV, or movie, and creating an audience that will come back. Now, I don't know how much general appeal Tomb Raider has 
on people outside of the video game community, but there's a good chance that, you know, maybe the TV show is going to be what draws people in, you know? And one thing I've always said that um, I wish more TV shows would do, um, because I had said this for Game of Thrones, like before they went off on that whack ending for their series finale, I was like, what they really should have done was make their series finales movies. They should have just said like, yo, these big old battles that we got coming up, it's just going to be a 90 minute movie in theaters and that's it. And guess what? Everybody that watched the show was going to be at them theaters. Everybody who had not watched the show, they'd be like, dang, maybe I should go watch the show so I can know what's going on in the theaters. But that was a missed opportunity either way. Um, let me know, are you excited about this news for Tomb Raider? Does this get you more interested now that you know that they're going to reboot? Amazon is putting a lot of money behind this and, um, you know, it's all going to be connected. Does that sharpen your interest? Does it heighten, pique your interest at all? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, let's get to Team Tech Board. Thank you so much. Just popping in to say hello, eFam. Can't stay tonight. We'll catch the replay. Shout out to the replay gang. Thank you so, so much, Team Tech Boy. Appreciate you. Hope mom is doing well as well. Thank you so much. Um, all right, let's move on. What else we got? Okay, we got a uh, bad boys update. Um, so if you recall, uh, Will Smith has come back, um, you know, recently, and this is pre-slap. Uh, I hate that that's a benchmark for his career, but it is. Um, and uh, he had relatively good success with Bad Boys 3. Um, and honestly, I thought Bad Boys 3 was cool. Like, I, you know, like it, it, I already went into it with low expectations. So the fact that it like met my expectations was a win. So I was like, cool, great, all right. Um, but it looks like we do have an update on the franchise, which is Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are going to do a fourth Bad Boys movie. Um, and that is going to be something that they're going to work on. Uh, Sony Pictures confirmed that the uh, it's still untitled. They don't have a title for it yet, um, but they are bringing back the same directors from the previous movie. Um, and if you recall, those directors were the guys that did the Batgirl movie um, and they did the Ms. Marvel series uh, on Disney+. Plus. Um, so, you know, they, it's funny, too, because like if you go to Will Smith's uh, social media, you see him kind of driving around. He goes to meet um, Martin Lawrence. And it was kind of funny because they made a joke basically saying, you know, bad boys for life. And because of that, they kind of missed a huge opportunity to call the fourth movie bad boys for life. And now it's kind of like, well, what, what you going to do with the four and bad boys Four? it's just they missed that opportunity. But I'm glad they knew that to joke about it. Um, but that's all the information we really have about it. Uh, we don't really know what the story is going to be about or anything like that. Um, but um, I'm curious. Are you interested in a Bad Boys 4? Um, I like I like the fact that Will Smith is over the slap. And I like the fact that even though it's still mentioned in the articles and people, are, you know, still in the I like the fact that he's like moved on. I like the fact that he's moved on because, honestly, everybody else should move on as well. And I think by the time this movie comes out, I hope, anyway, people just get over it and we just go watch it. I'm going to watch it just because we're four mo movies in. Why not? Um, but uh, And I like the third one, so we'll see what happens. Um, but I am kind of interested to see. Um, are you still interested? You know, like, you know, is four too much? Uh, because I mean, sometimes just because you have a sequel doesn't mean it's gonna be even better. Look what happened to Rush Hour. Rush Hour one, great. What Rush Hour two, cool. Three, four, yeah, yeah. It, it it just it just started going downhill. So y'all let me know how you feel. Um, if you want to see um uh bad boys four, uh right um rims what you got some of us in here acting like uh the like button is the ops uh what did the mod say to the squad kang is coming next week hit the likes to avoid the stomp just kidding uh but no really hit the likes rims thank you so so much appreciate you all day yes if you have the chance go ahead and hit the like button 
appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to your boy. Subscribe to the channel. You never know what's going to happen, what's going to show up, what I'm going to post, when I'm going to go live. Just, just go ahead and do it and have yourself a great time. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, and yes, yes, Facebook likes count. We take them all. I take all likes, whatever, but the, 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 yeah, all the likes. Give me all the likes. I, Give me a thumbs up in the comments. I don't care. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, what else we got? Woo-wee! Listen, we talked about this before. Y'all, Netflix ain't playing with y'all. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Netflix is done playing with y'all. And we've talked about this before. Netflix is done. They are done with y'all and all this password sharing. Okay, you and your cousin Pookie, you and your yo yo brother, yo yo sister, you know that live in another state. Y'all going to stop all that sharing now. They don't they not playing with y'all now, okay? Netflix is done. And apparently they have unveiled the first details of the anti-password sharing measures. What does that mean? So what ended up happening was um this was a some screenshots basically of the help menu you you know like whenever you go to like the help menu on a website or whatever so this is what basically it came out and um one of the things they said was like okay well who can use a netflix account and it said that uh netflix accounts are still shareable but only within one household to ensure that your devices are associated with your primary location netflix is now asking users to connect to the Wi-Fi at your primary location. Open the Netflix app or website and watch something, anything, at least once every 31 days. Now, can you still share Netflix with somebody else? Netflix says, yeah, that's cool. No, 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 I'm sorry. They said no. Accounts are only meant to be used within one household. Netflix will prompt users who try to sign into your account somewhere else to sign up for their own account instead and block their access until they do. Netflix will not begin automatically charging account holders whose information is used outside of their homes. I told you Netflix ain't playing with y'all. I told you Netflix is not playing with y'all. They are sick of y'all. They tired of losing money. This And you know what? I've tried to tell y'all. Netflix is in the game, whether it's the stream. I don't care what streaming outlet it is. Disney, HBO, Netflix, whatever. There's only so many people that you can get to register, right? There's only so many people that you can get to sign up for your streaming platform. So what's going to There are two things that are going to happen with every streaming platform, no matter who they are, no matter what they advertise. Just take this to the bank. One, the prices are always going to go up. I don't care if they come out with, I don't care if Tubi Unlimited comes out and they say it's always going to be $5.99. No, it ain't. Because in 10 years, it's going to be $15.99, $20.99, whatever. There's no way the bigger these things get that they're not, that they're going to be able to stay at the same price cap. So prices will always go up. Second thing that's going to always happen, there's always going to be a cap. There's always going to be a cap at the amount of people that can sign up. Why? Because it's a cap of people in the world. And it's a cap of people that can afford these things. So what ends up happening when you reach the top, which at this point, Netflix or Disney, I forget which one, someone's going to reach the mountaintop. Someone is going to hit that cap at 200 million subscribers, whatever the main number is. And you know what they're going to do? Because they can only raise the money so much. They can raise the cost so much. They're going to tight that belt down a little bit more. And that's where this password sharing is coming from. They tired of losing money because your cousin that's stealing your your account information, you know, or or maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Maybe Maybe mommy and daddy got the account and it's you. You know, Netflix is like, look, you better come up with that $5.99. Get on this ad-supported plan because they got to recoup and keep that money. Whatever it is. Now, listen. Um, ooh, 
look, look at Aleev coming through. Come through, Aleev, with the great co- come through with the great questions. Look at this. Aleev, I got you covered. What if you travel for a living? Which, by the way, sometimes this happens for me. Now, I don't travel for a living. But if I do travel, I do watch my Netflix. And I don't want to be dealing with all this nonsense or whatever. They actually answered that. Hold on. Let me get that. Uh, can you still use Netflix while traveling? Here's what they said. Let me make it a little bigger. Traveling users who want to use Netflix on a hotel, smart TV, company laptop, etc., can request a temporary code from the service when signing in. This will give you access to your account for seven consecutive days. Well, that's 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 it. That, so, yeah, I guess you can get it, but, you know, you're only going to get a week. You know, and maybe you're just going to have to continuously sign in to get it. I, I, I told y'all Netflix ain't playing with y'all, okay? And 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 here's the thing. I can say this from, from my position because I am the main account holder. I do pay the bills for, for the Netflix account. Ain't nobody sharing our Netflix account. So I'm fine with it. This don't hurt me none at all, okay? <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> it would definitely suck. If I if I was on my parents or family's stuff and now I'd have to like start paying for it, but that ain't my problem. <laughs> okay. I pay for my stuff right now. Uh, but uh yeah, in the meantime, Netflix is not playing with y'all. Um, so I don't know. Y'all gotta let me know how do you feel about the fact that Netflix is buckling down on this password sharing stuff? Because let's be here's the thing: it's a copycat league out here. If it works for Netflix, you better believe everybody else is going to start doing it. HBO is going to start doing that, too. Disney Plus might start doing it, too. Hulu might start doing Everybody's going to do what works. So just, just, just saying, just saying, be prepared. Now, at the same time um, that uh, Netflix is not playing with y'all, uh, I also want to report that Netflix was just joking. Uh, because apparently all of this was reported as an error. Yes, Netflix claims it errantly posted password sharing rules that would block devices outside of subscribers' homes in the U.S. Yes, so uh, yes, they was playing, but not really. Uh, so what they ended up saying was, for a brief time yesterday, a Help Center article containing information that is only applicable to Chile Costa Rica and Peru went live in other countries. Uh, we have since updated it. In other words, um, yeah, all y'all other international places, y'all can't go sharing these passwords. U.S., y'all cool for now. For now, okay? But get ready. Let's not pretend Netflix ain't finna come for you soon. Okay, they coming for you real soon. But yes, in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, Netflix is not rolling this out. If you are a U.S. resident, it is only going to go out to select countries outside again for now. So anyway, um, there you go. Um, (laughs) They was playing, but not playing. But then they was playing. But yeah, they not playing. (laughs) You know. Anyway, how do you feel about the password cracking? Um, and hey, it, it's not here yet, but it will be coming soon. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, uh, we got my man Bobby Wright. What's going on, sir? You're so close. I know, man. And that's me, man. Like, I have not, I've been working the job, um, uh, my full time job. This is my part time, as y'all know. Um, working a full time job, and I just I don't have time to make the videos that I want. And, you know, the funny thing is, is like going live doesn't gain subscribers. Like you don't get new people by going live. Um, going, I do that for y'all. I do. It's for the E-Fam. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the live is for the people that are here already. Um, but to get new subscribers, I got to take the time to go make more videos. And I just work in the nine to five. I just I don't have as much time as I used to because I'm back in the office so i don't know but we gonna get that we gonna get that i just need a thousand just need a thousand we'll get that soon thank you so much sir i appreciate you 
uh what we got marvin what you got here thank you so much make a bad boys movie where other duos uh cameo in eddie murphy nick nolte danny glover mel gibson interesting you know what that is not that that's interesting now i would have to see you know whose properties are you know could work um but i feel like if you go that route you have to be careful not to get too cheesy with it because i could totally see them just making it so cheesy that you know you don't want that gimmick to hold the movie down right so um i would be open to it but i really want to hear more on how they want to execute it i don't know about nick nolte too nick nolte been looking kind of crazy ever since the apprentice i don't know uh eddie murphy though man first of all how about you just add eddie murphy in uh you could throw eddie murphy in today in anything and he's still just fine so um i would just take that i, you, I don't need the whole crossover just give me eddie murphy that works uh but thank you so much for that i appreciate you um what you got gaming what you got uh good day e-man and chat much love thank you so much for that i appreciate that contribution really do thank you so much alib uh there we go e-man did you get my pressure up for nothing no i just reported the news what you mean i just i'm just here to report the news that's all i do i don't know i you know like eh, you know it's not my fault netflix you know did what they did i i'm just letting y'all know how it go uh but anyway thank you so much for that i appreciate you uh all right let's move on uh, what else do we have? So last week we talked about the fact that there is a new Michael Jackson biopic coming out, um, and that is going to be um, uh, produced by um, Graham King. He's the one that did um, Bohemian Rhapsody, um, and it's going to be directed by Antoine Fuqua. Um, but one of the biggest things I told you guys about was it was the biggest question, who's going to play Michael Jackson? And how many actors are you going to get to play Michael Jackson? Because are you going to get, you know, you're going to get the little kitty mic. You're going to get dark mic. Then you're going to have to get medium mic. Then you might have to get light mic. How many? How, you want, It's a lot of mics that you might need to get. You know, like it, it's a wide range. And no, we are not talking about Flex. Okay, Flex Washington is done. OK, we're not doing this. However, it looks like the search has finally come to an end and they found him. Michael Jackson's nephew, Jafar Jackson, is going to play him in the upcoming biopic. OK, so um, this is from uh, Catherine Jackson, mom, uh, Michael Jackson's mama, uh, his auntie <laughs> or I'm sorry, grandma. Um, Jafar embodies my son. It's so wonderful to see him carry the Jackson legacy of entertainers and performers. Uh, and uh, Graham King, the producer, said this. Uh, I met Jafar over two years ago and was blown away by the way he organically personifies the spirit and personality of Michael. It was something so powerful that even after conducting a worldwide search, it was clear that he is the only person to take on this role. I am beyond thrilled that he has come on board to portray his uncle and cannot wait for the world to see him on the big screen as Michael. And you see here, Antoine Fuqua went uh, went ahead and uh, posted this uh, image um, of Jafar as well. Um, dang, do we have a picture of him? Let me see if we can get a picture or something, because I wanted to see. Oh, dang, they, they're not giving me. You can't see him? Hold on. Let me see if I can get a picture of him, because last time I looked, he actually looked uh, pretty close. Pretty close to, um, let me turn that off. He looked pretty close to uh, to Michael. You know, I mean, listen, the Jacksons got some strong genes, in, in case you didn't know. Uh, so that's not too much. Okay, here he goes. Here he goes. Uh, so here's an image. Here's a picture of him. Um, and, hey, yeah, listen, with a little bit of makeup, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, he, he already medium Mike, right? So he, he's got medium mic right down. 
Um, with a little bit of makeup, he could definitely go on the light mic. Uh, I mean, they're gonna have to get somebody else to play little kid mic, but you know, depending and this really depends on how much they want to do with the story, right? Um, but you know, listen, I don't know how well he can act or not. Um, but I mean, I see it, you know, like I said, them Jackson street jeans are strong, right? Um you know, and I'm assuming that, you know, he can do the moves or maybe they'll have a body double and that's fine too. I, I don't, I don't need the actor to actually do the moves, right? As long as you put something on screen that's convincing, I'm fine either way. Um, but it, the acting will matter because as I've told you, one of the biggest challenges of finding a person to play Michael Jackson is because he's so iconic. He's so iconic that we all know how mike acts how he sounds how he walks how he talks so excuse me if anybody missteps or just doesn't hit it all the way we gonna know it's gonna be off so um anyway what i think is um well, i guess i don't know if it's reassuring or if maybe or maybe if it's a little bit concerning so maybe it's reassuring maybe it's concerning but it's back to the producer's quote where he said it was something so powerful that even after conducting a worldwide search, it was clear that Jafar was the only person to take on this role. So I have to assume, I have to assume based on that quote, that they did a huge audition. He said a worldwide search. And I know every actor and they mama, every Michael Jackson impersonator, everybody who's been living the dream that they thought that they could be Mike and wanted to be, you know, act just like Mike, went to that audition and apparently Jafar beat them all out. So, okay, this is big, big talk for a legendary iconic figure. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Because if you're telling me that you did a worldwide search, that means Jafar about to get like an award or something. So, okay. I mean, this is big. It's a big, a big challenge. But I am open to see how it goes. And um, I'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, y'all let me know. How do you feel? about Jafar Jackson now being the new, you know, Michael Jackson's nephew. He is going to portray him in the biopic. Does this make you more comfortable? Do you, are you still anxious? Um, or how are you feeling in general about the Michael Jackson biopic? Does this make you feel better knowing who's going to play Mike? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, oh, let me grab this comment. Sim, what you got? Uh, we all appreciate the live streams. Thanks as always, E Man. Highlight of my Friday, Sim. Thank you so much. It listen, it's it's a work of a labor of love. I love doing it. It's you know, I don't care how much work it takes to do these. I'm gonna do them as long as I can uh, and when I can for y'all because y'all it, it's a highlight for my week as well. Um, so thank you so so much. I appreciate you, uh, Akuri. You know, I'm kind of mm, yeah yeah. It, it depends on if you like Kenya Barris's humor. Like, to be honest, I didn't even want to finish it because I was like, I was like halfway through it. And I was like, I know where it's going. I'm not, I don't, I don't need to finish watching. Like, but if you like that humor, it's going to be funny to you. And that's okay. You know, I always tell people comedy is subjective. To me, it's hit or miss. It was hit or miss. I thought a couple jokes lasted a little too long. I thought some of them just weren't really written as well, you know, but whatever. Anyway, uh, you people wasn't for me, um, even though I understand why other people like it. I get that. Um, Kiki, what you got? Netflix about to go, uh, about to get that HBO Prime Hulu treatment. I only activate to watch a new season of shows. Now it's HBO for Last of Us, and then I cancel. You know what? I hear you. I hear you. And honestly, I think it's going to get to that point. Um, and I think this is the, listen, what you're doing is a great idea for you as a consumer, right? 
And I know a lot of y'all, you know, for whatever reason, people, every time I talk about this next thing I'm going to talk about, people don't know how to separate what I'm saying with how they feel. When I talk about it's a good strategy to make shows go weekly, some shows, not all, on streaming platforms like Netflix, I say that because it's usually a better business decision for that company. It doesn't hurt us as consumers because guess what? You're still going to tune in next week if that show is great. But for a business, it's better to go weekly. Why? Because if you drop everything all at once, this idea that you just brought up, which is great for you, is great to protect your wallet, right? But for a business, this is terrible. If I can sit here, let's say they drop uh, Last of Us all at once. That could take you a weekend to finish. Then you're gone. What does that mean for HBO? If I'm HBO, it's like, dang, all I got out of Kiki was only $15, maybe $7.99 because of the trial period or something like that. But if I did it week to week, maybe I get $30, $60. Maybe she'll forget to cancel and I'll keep getting even more money, right? So this is a great strategy, but at the same time, don't be surprised if sooner or later, the companies are going to latch on to that and they'll come up with something else to make you stay on longer. But I think the best compromise is to just make some shows, not all, some shows, just make them weekly. You'll keep us on the platform longer. Yes, I'm going to have to make some decisions between do I want to keep this uh, Paramount versus HBO? I don't know. It'll depend on what show I want to watch and what the hype is. Um, but the other good thing here, one positive for everybody, is that <clears throat> if that is the strategy that more people take on where they just cancel per show, it's going to put more pressure on these outlets, on these studios and these uh, stu uh, companies to put better content out. Because if you got The Last of Us and then five days later you got Game of Thrones or, you know, uh, House of the Dragon and then you got, you know, some other show coming right back to back to back, you're going to keep people signed up. You're going to keep making money. So either way, um, I'm not mad at you at all. I'm thinking about doing the same thing with a couple myself. Um, but that, that listen, it, that's, that's a smart strategy. Protect your wallet. Thank you so much, Kiki. I always appreciate you. Um, do I have any more? Do I have any more? Oh, yep, 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 there we go. My man, Matthew Collins, what you got? If Flex even auditions. Come on, let's not even put that in the ether. Okay, someone needs to video anyone telling him Peter Griffin voice. Hey, stop it. Stop it. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. <laughs> I don't even I don't even want to see that audition. Okay, that I would not know what's worse, that audition or Tyrese's for Django. I don't know which one would be worse. I don't even want to play that game. I don't. I, do, I don't. I don't. Um, but thank you so much, Matthew. I appreciate you, of course. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, my gosh. Y'all, okay, again, I don't really like dealing in rumors unless there's um, legs to it. And I'm not going to give this more energy than it really needs. I'm just doing this just for fun. So I don't want y'all to think that there's anything behind this or whatever. People are talking, blah, blah, blah. But one thing that has been so highly anticipated is, oh my gosh, who are we going to cast for the Fantastic Four? Now, as we know, like probably the most popular character of the Fantastic Four is Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. And if you recall, we finally, after the fans have been demanding it and pushing it for years, we finally got John Krasinski to play him, even if it was just for two minutes in Doctor Strange 2, uh, to, to, you know, even though he got turned into spaghetti or whatever. You know, and from what it sounds like, it sounds like that's just a one and done deal, which means that the MCU still wants to find someone else to play Reed Richards. All right. Now, I've said this, that um, now there was a rumor not too long ago that Adam Driver, remember Adam Driver, a.k.a. Kylo Ren and all that, like he was supposed to be in the running for Reed Richards. 
Um, then uh, another rumor was um, what was that dude's name? Uh, Ryan Gosling. Like for whatever reason, Ryan Gosling was also granted. They just said he was going to make an appearance. Maybe Reed Richards, maybe somebody else. Who knows? But they threw his name in the hat, and I'm like, come on, like y'all just throwing these names out just to throw them out. Ryan Gosling, like y'all trying to put me to sleep during Fantastic Four? I'm going to be Fantastic Snore. No, no, thank you. But now there's another name that's being thrown out. And um, let me just get to it. Here's, here's the other name now. And it is Dev Patel. Another rumor is Dev Patel is out here um, potentially as the front runner not just a consideration but supposedly as one of the top the top considerations for mr fantastic reed richards now let me just say a couple things about this one dev patel is a great actor he's a great actor and i've always told y'all Whenever we talking about fan casting, whenever we talk about, you know, like imagining who could be in a role, etc. Cetera, et cetera, the first thing you need to look at is talent. That's first. You always need to stop and look at talent. And this brother has talent. OK, um, you could see him in uh, the Green Knight. Um, uh, what else was he in that was also. Um, uh major thing i'm sorry i'm blanking out but uh green knight was definitely his more recent one um where he was like just great like i mean awards consideration talent right so let me make it clear that i have no doubt that this guy if chosen would absolutely crush the role because he's never missed when it comes to his acting however he would not be my first choice to play reed richards he when i think of reed richards that's not the character that i would say hey let's give that to dev patel okay and here's one of the other reasons why i have this and i'm just gonna say it because i know it's gonna come up one way or another and i know this is hypothetical he ain't got the role whatever but as someone who constantly is in support of diversity and inclusion and stuff like that. At some point, I get the impression that Marvel and maybe even other studios might be doing a little too much too fast just for the sake of doing it. Slumdog Millionaire. Thank you. That's what that was. The, it was blanking on me. Thank you, Ms. Harper, for that. That's where you could find Dev Patel. Go check it out. Great movie as well. But sometimes it feels like, man, are y'all just doing this just to say, just to check off a box? Are you just saying it just to say, hey, we're going to do Because let's be honest. Y'all know good and well who is going to have a problem if Dev Patel gets to take this traditionally white role from anybody else. Y'all already know who's going to have this problem with that. And my only issue is, why do we need to unnecessarily stir the pot? Now, I am not going to sit here and act like uh, other roles can't be race banned or whatever. I'm not saying that because I don't have a problem with a lot of it. Now, one question I'd have, and a lot of this depends. Okay, so I'm giving you all a lot of qualifiers. A lot of this depends. But for my comic book fans, just a little something. Let's not recall. Let's recall the fact that Reed Richards has a son named Franklin Richards, Franklin Richards, and Valeria, his daughter. And there's this whole idea of them being mutants or maybe mutants or whatever. And if you know anything with Marvel, Marvel likes to deal with mutants as an allegory or a mirror for discrimination, right? And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, if you go ahead and make Reed Richards a person of color, in the comics, because his kids are kind of sort of mutants, or at least they're considered as such, there's this weird discrimination type of issue that happens between them. And I'm like, it's just going to feel off if 
that dynamic is explored where you have a person of color having a problem with someone being a mutant. Eh, it's just going to feel a little weird. Now, you could dance around it. I know. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like it would still be a little bit stronger if you actually left Reed White and allowed him to have some prejudices, right? Because he will have some prejudices later and let that play out. You know, because sometimes I don't want people to think that, like, white characters are bad things, you know, like keeping them white. Sometimes, and this is the argument I've had for Iron Fist, there's value in keeping Iron Fist. By the way, please recast Iron Fist. But there's value in keeping uh, Iron Fist white because Danny Rand, when he comes back into society, he has he's a white guy with a lot of privilege, but he befriends Luke Cage and he learns to check his social privilege. Like he he really starts to learn and he becomes a great caveat for audiences to see privilege and the difference between races and stuff. So sometimes these things matter to have those parallels. But if everybody's every different color and every race and all this and it don't matter, then you kind of lose some of that. So anyway, this is a long extrapolation for a whole hypothetical. Um, but I just want to know, how do y'all feel if if Dev Patel is cast? And I'm going to throw this in there because I'm not a hater. I'm not. If he gets cast, I'm fine with it. Whatever. Like I said, he just wasn't my first pick, um, you know, but I'm not mad if they pick him. Matter of fact, if you think about it, hold on now, hold on now. Y'all know Kang the Conqueror is a brother from the 31st century, okay? And there was always this little rumor uh, or discrepancy about, well, is Kang a descendant of Reed Richards? And if he's a descendant of Reed Richards, maybe this is where the color began. Maybe maybe this is where the maybe the, the maybe this is where the, the gene pool started. I don't know. I don't know. Just saying. But I'm gonna throw this out here too, just because, like I said, I'm not a hater about any of this. Um, and I know a lot of times for people, y'all gotta see it to believe it. So here we go. Here's uh here's at least I thought it was pretty good art of what Dev Patel could look like if he was Mr. Fantastic. I mean, again, I'm not mad at it. If they do it, it's not it's not crazy, you know. I could I, I, I think I could get used to this, maybe. I don't know. What do y'all think about Dev Patel? Potentially, maybe, kind of sort of it's a rumor. We're gonna take it with a huge grain of salt. If he became Mr. Fantastic, how would you feel about that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right. Um, speaking of comments, I think I had some I need to grab. Oh, Diane coming through. Thank you so much, Diane. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I don't care about the Michael Jackson movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not watching anyway. Hey, man. And Kang gang. Uh, maybe Anthony Mackie would have made you people better. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think he probably could have made it better. I'm gonna go with that. I'm okay with that. Thank you for that, Diane. I appreciate you. I'm 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 gonna leave that alone because maybe he could, you know, couldn't have gotten any worse, you know. Uh, but thank you so much. Oh, Diane, back at it. Lakeith Stanfield for Reed Richards. Oh, now you really, now you really trying to set the internet on fire. Okay, you about to burn all of the people getting hot. Oof. Yikes, yikes. Y'all can have it. I, he wouldn't be my first pick. Like, I would, if I had to pick, I would take Dev Patel over Lakeith in that role. But if you really wanted to troll the internet, that would do it. That would do it. Thank you for that, Diane. I appreciate you. Um, let's see. Uh, wait, wait, Didier, what you got? If Marvel picks Dev, uh, they are probably thinking about those 1 billion potential fans in India. It's not a bad idea. That's not, I mean, Bollywood is only the second largest. If not, I think they might have beat out Hollywood. The following for South Asian 
movies, the market is huge. It's huge. I cannot underestimate. Yes. Fantastic point. Great point. That's the one. And I'm not mad at it. Like, if it's a if it's a business move, you know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe Kamala Khan will kind of help with that a little bit too, but yo, sure. 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 Grab that market. Grab that market. Uh all right. <clears throat> what else do we have? Um uh we got that, got that. Okay. Uh so we got another uh update here. Uh potential update anyway. Um, so I don't know about y'all, but, um, you know, we know that Creed, uh, three is coming out. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is going to be directing it. Um, I've already told y'all that like Jonathan Majors is pretty much going to own 2023. Okay. We got Kang Gang in full effect. Um, and, uh, he is, uh, I- I've told y'all this before. Um, you know, Ant-Man's finna get squashed and Creed is finna get washed. Okay, that's just that's just what's going to happen. There's no real debating about it. Um, but the question is, like, you know, um, and matter of fact, a new poster came out, and um with uh and, and this is getting me psyched because look at this here. This is crazy. Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Creed is finna get washed. There's no way he's gonna be able to walk away when you have Jonathan Majors, like he looks like a beast. Jonathan Majors is going to destroy Creed. Point blank, period. Okay. So we actually have a little bit of news. Uh, and this was like an interview from Michael B. Jordan. Um, and he actually gave us an update on the future of Creed. And one of those things, hold on, I got to actually take this down so I can read. <laughs> uh, there could be a, a Creed 4. We might get a Creed 4. And the possibility of a spinoff. And this is what Michael B. Jordan had to say. Uh, When he was asked about a spinoff in the future of the franchise, he said, look, I just want to expand the Creed verse within reason, but definitely expect other things around Creed for sure. For sure, right? So um, I know a lot of y'all are thirsty. So here you go. And I'm going to just, you know, because listen, we're going to have our time too. Don't you worry about it, but go ahead for this. In the meantime, Creed 4, if Rocky, okay, if Rocky can have 11 movies, you can give me a Creed 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with multiple Creed films as long as Michael B. Jordan finds a way, because I believe he is the main producer for this, as long as he finds compelling ways to make the stories interesting, right? Don't go copying Rocky. I don't want to see Creed 4 be about him in a street fight, you know, with some dude on uh, in the streets or whatever. Like, actually make it something compelling and interesting so that way um, we can have something, like, you know, different. So hopefully that happens. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, I'm excited for Creed 3. Um, Like I said, it is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. We're going to have to see what happens. I'm already putting my money on on Jonathan Major's character. Um, I know Creed is probably going to win, but whatever. Like, Creed finna get, he he finna get washed. I'm sorry. Anyway, how are you feeling about uh, the potential of more, um, of more Creed movies? Uh, Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh right, let's see here. Um All right, I'm going to move on. Reese, I did see your message. Thank you so so much for that. Um and I am wishing you the best with your uh petition. Thank you for that. Uh let's see 60 what we got. Uh Mercy Cougar Crow. Oh boy. Oh but listen, don't don't be coming on. Listen. Don't. Don't Y'all, y'all keep that over there. Okay. I gave y'all y'all five minutes. Y'all, y'all good. Y'all good. Thank you for that. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see what you got. Did you Creed four will be against Logan Paul? My God. That just remind me. Thank you for that reminder. Cause I got to watch that Logan Paul, uh, interview with Bomani Jones on, uh, H- I think it's on HBO or whatever it is. I got to go watch that where, um, Logan Paul was like, I don't even know who you are. 
and like <laughs> Bomani was like, people only know you because like you're a loser or something like that. I don't know, whatever it was. It was definitely funny. I gotta go watch it. But you could be right, and I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong because I would hate for Logan Paul to get that kind of attention. Uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Uh, but thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. Uh, all right, let's move on. We got uh, we got a lot more to talk about, and I gotta hurry up. Uh, Dave Batista. So, in case you didn't know, Dave Batista has been making the rounds. Um, I gotta work on my uh, knock on the cabin review for you guys, just as a quick review because Dave Batista is in there. Uh, the movie's okay. It's all right. It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Um, interesting themes, um, you know, but uh, I would temper expectations. Don't go in there expecting what you normally would expect with M. Night Shyamalan. Um, but it is kind of entertaining. It does keep you on the edge of your seat and all that good stuff. Um, but I just wasn't really a fan of the uh, ending. I thought the ending was kind of, yeah, yeah, just like that. So um, otherwise, Dave Batista though, great and one of the things that uh dave batista has been doing recently is talking about like yo like he wants to get different roles he wants to be able to play different parts um you know and and i mean i know one time he said like how come i'm not getting uh romantic comedies and being the lead and i'm like yeah that mm, i don't know i don't think that's for you bro i mean when you the big muscle guy ah you you're gonna get kind of typecast most of the time in Hollywood, you know, um, but uh, there was one thing, as you know, James Gunn has taken over the DCU uh, and um, he is real cool with Dave Batista and Batista is real cool with James Gunn. So one thing people were wondering was, well, your boys over there with DC, you're about to end your run as Drax with Marvel. Are you going to make the jump? Like, what's up? And one person kind of asked him, like, well, like, what's going on? And Dave Batista did say that he reached out to James Gunn about a role, and this is kind of what he said. Uh, so he reached out to James Gunn about playing Bane. That's right, DC's Bane. Y'all remember him? I was used in the darkness. Um, and uh, that is not going to happen, according to James Gunn. Um, and uh, he said that basically you need younger actors. Um, so here's what he ended up saying here. Uh, he said, I have had conversations with James Gunn about that, but I think the direction Gunn is leaning in, completely rebooting the whole universe, he's starting from scratch and starting younger and fresher. I think you need to do that. I think for the DC universe to be revived, you need to start from scratch. And I think you need to start with younger actors. You need to start to plan for the next 15 years. And I just don't think you can do that with me. And I understand it. Uh, he also said, I have to say that I appreciate that um, because I don't want to play a character that I can't bring justice to it. I don't think at this point in my career that I can bring justice to Bane anymore. I just uh, don't know if I could handle the physical part. And I don't think uh, I would have the longevity to plan ahead for films. Just uh, so I just don't know if I'd be that guy. And you know what? I really, really, really like I am really becoming a fan of Dave Batista. Like in terms of his honesty, his candor, um, and his hard work. Like, my man has really grown as an actor. When you see him in different projects, um, he's not the same. Like, he's his his range as an actor is starting to grow, mainly because he's taking on so many different roles. And don't get me wrong, if I had to pick, I would have loved to see him as Bane. I think he's, I, to be honest, I still think he could play Bane, you know, because if it's not in James Gunn's version, I'd be like, yo, Matt Reeves, can we talk? Like, he could, he just needs to be a Bane that's one and done. He doesn't have to be a Bane for 15 years, you know. So if, if he could play Bane just one time, I think he would be perfect for it. And he would do a really, really good job. Um, but, you know, it is what it is for now. Uh, so maybe it doesn't fit James Gunn's version, which I still don't know if that's true, but I guess he talked to him, so he knows. But, um, and we'll talk about it later. It doesn't sound like we're getting a young Batman from uh, uh, from James Gunn. So I don't really know why he couldn't work as as bane but i don't know 
Y'all let me know. Uh, what do you think about Dave Batista um, wanting to play Bane? He says he's too old. Personally, I think he could still do it, but I don't think he could do it for 15 years. Just, yeah, like a one and done type of thing would be fine, uh, in my opinion. I mean, Bane's not that deep of a character anyway. He's a great character, but he's not that deep where you got to keep having him anyway. Um, but y'all let me know. How do you feel about Dave Batista? And would you want to see him in a different role, potentially, in the DCU? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, Ali, what you got? E-Man, thank you for doing the Lord's work out here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Latrice, what you got? Uh, I'm going to be mad if Kang doesn't have at least one shirtless scene in Quantum Main. You know what? I don't know. I, I did see in some trailer, like, he was really getting roughed up. And, like, his suit was, like, getting ripped. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you get a bicep or something. I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not looking for that. But, you know, you guess I guess you're going to have to watch and find out. Uh, but thank you for that uh matthew what you got uh cleaning up the page safety first uh wet floor signs down watch your step yeah uh dc has got to be cleaned up it has to from the ground up and it is absolutely necessary like no question uh thank you for that uh take five what you got uh really excited for dc to thrive now with this new slate i think ansel uh elgahort or i don't know how to say his name ansel uh can be a great superman and miles teller or shia labeouf as bats dc rise um shia labeouf would not be on my list uh miles teller maybe maybe if you go with a younger batman um to be honest i'm a little miles tellered out like i'm i'm a little over him um not to say he's bad or nothing but i just wouldn't want to see him as that role um Ansel, eh, a Superman. I mean, I feel like you could find. I think you could find a better Superman. I think, but Ansel's. If you got to go young with that, I guess. I guess, but sure, why not? Whatever. I'm not tripping over who they make Superman. Um. All right, so I think that covers all of the uh, pre stuff. Um. Now we have time to actually go through and talk about um the upcoming dc slate and the big announcements now this was something james gunn um james gunn had been promising to us for like a long time people was thirsty online people was mad at james gunn they wanted to fire him before he even got the job before he even announced anything um and you know like we it was just like look like y'all wait <laughs> you know like just hold on so um what he ended up doing uh, was he actually uh, invited some press out, uh, only select press. And um, while he invited them out, he also um, told them everything that was going to happen. So basically, he gave them all the news so that way everything could drop at once, right? And uh, and they also released a video. And uh, this video is something that uh, we are going to go through. We're going to watch it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to go through the video with you all. And yes, I'm going to have to take some breaks, maybe talk over it because copyrights. I'm doing commentary. WB, stop stop flagging my stuff. I'm doing commentary for my audience that is fair use. Leave me alone. Okay, leave me alone. But anyway, um, so uh, we're going to go through the announcement. I'll break it up, give a little commentary through. Um, and then when we're done with that, I'm gonna. There were a lot of other articles related to his announcements, or there were other things that were said after his video. Um, so we'll conclude with those uh, news bits afterwards. But right now, we're gonna get ready um, so that we can watch what James Gunn had to say, and then we're gonna break that down. All right, I need to uh, give me a nice little little break. Little Albanese, if you please, break. No, nah, they still ain't going to sponsor your boy. That's okay. Uh, the, the gummies are still delicious. Um, but we are going to um, get this up here. Uh, James, let's get back to the beginning. Uh, and then we're going to go through all the little announcements and everything. Um, of what he had to say and uh let's go through it all right let's kick it off 
Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. AKA, DC has been a mess for years. A mess. Let's get some more. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. Now, what he just said there, I love the sound of it, but it also worries me, okay? On one hand, that is great. As a consumer, at you know, us, fans, viewers, the audience, it is a beautiful thing for you to tell me the same person I hear in the animated stuff or the same person I'm watching on the TV series is the same person I'm going to see in the movies. It's the same person and the same voice I'm going to hear in the video games or whatever. I like that, okay? I like that. But I do wonder, when you create such a dependency like that, are y'all ready to recast people? What if somebody get in trouble? What if somebody has pending charges or something? What if somebody, I don't know, was an international terrorist? You know, like, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So... All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, for now, for now, this sound good for now, but when you drop, if one domino fall, the other domino is going to fall with them. So just, just keep that in mind moving forward. Let's go. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds. Out Outside of the mainstream DCU. I love that. So, in other words, we are no longer going to have all this confusion between what's canon, what's not canon. Thank you. And I'm going to just say this real quick. Take a seat, James. This is the first sign of what has always been needed from DC. I just need to know y'all know what y'all doing. Competency. And all they did from the jump, we just gonna slap some labels on stuff. That's it. That's DC Elseworld. This is the DCU. This is canon. That's not. Matt Reeves, Joker, the black Superman uh, from Tana Hesey Coates and J.J. Abrams, Elseworld. Y'all over there. Y'all can do what y'all want to do. Y'all just over there. Y'all, You want to have 15 Batman? They over there. But this right here is the DCU. So if it says DCU, that's canon. If it don't, that's Elseworld. So simple. That's so simple. But it's like, it's sad that they even had to do this. Because it's like, man, if you come in and just, I don't know, apply common sense, you look like a genius. At DC. Hey, boss, I got an idea. Can we tell people what counts and what doesn't so they're not confused? You're hired. That's all it took. Man, I, any one of us could have walked in and Zaslav could have hired us if that was the bright idea. Anyway, let's go on. Continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly. Now, that's important to know because I talked about this before. I talked about this before. What are you going to do with these four movies that are coming? DC's got four movies coming out this year. This year. So, 2023. If we really have to compare, I think, I think this is going to be DC's year. I think DC is going to beat Marvel if we're talking about which movie. Marvel's only got Ant-Man 3, Guardians 3, and the Marvels. I don't see those as big hitters. Now, they could surprise us, 
but my feelings right now are that's three mid movies in a row. DC's got Shazam, probably gonna be mid too. I don't, I don't have high hopes for that. Blue Beetle, The Flash, and Aquaman two might do something, whatever. But the question is, do they like? Do they count? What are they? And I try to tell people. I think I told y'all this before. James, take a seat. As long as they did not have strong ties to the Snyderverse, it leaves enough wiggle room for them to actually count in the main DCU. So, if you recall, Black Adam. Black Adam had the opportunity. Black Adam probably had the opportunity to wiggle its way into the main DCU had they never brought Henry Cavill back. Because James Gunn ain't trying to mess with Henry Cavill like that. Not in a bad way. That's just not his vision. So the moment you put Henry Cavill in there, it's going to cause too much confusion for other people. So the Black Adam, that's probably now going to be in the else world. They're going to throw that away somewhere else. That doesn't mean that The Rock can't come back as Black Adam somewhere else. It just means that movie, it can't count. Shazam, on the other hand, probably got lucky because Shazam went ahead and they, remember in the first movie, they showed Superman, but they didn't show his face, right? So because they didn't show his face, that's what he's talking about when he says it's able to kind of coexist. So as long as these things don't pull directly from the Snyderverse with the actors that are not moving forward in certain roles, they're going to count. And I think that's fine. So Blue Beetle, easy. Don't nobody have no expectations with Blue Beetle? Throw that in there. That could count. You know, the Flash, mm, we're going to get to the Flash in a second. But the whole thing is, at least right now, there are so many different things that as long as you maybe can dissect and, and take out the Snyderverse stuff, you stand a stronger chance of being part of the main continuity. But he's got more stuff to say, so let's go on through it. Into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue... Okay, that's not exactly true. Um, but... That it that is something I've been saying they needed to do for a long time, which is the Flash, just like in the comic books, just like in the comics, that should always be your easy blow it up fix. When in doubt, hit that time travel button and you out of here. When in doubt, and I've told y'all this before, because of all the issues going on with Ezra Miller, it is ridiculous. Ridiculous to even consider if I'm DC Warner Brothers to continue on with Ezra as the Flash. I don't care how great the Flash is. I don't care how much money it makes. It don't matter. With that said, the easiest way to just recast the Flash is to use the movie and the time travel aspect. I don't care what happens because the movie's already shot. All you got to do is throw in a post credit scene. Barry done done. He did all his little time travel shenanigans. He wakes up, goes into the bathroom, looks into the mirror, and it's a different face. Cut to the credits. That's it. I don't even care who the face is. I don't care if the face is blank. Whatever the point is, it, it just get another flash in there. And that's the easiest way to get this done. Recast the flash. You don't need Ezra. Ain't nobody going to these movies for Ezra, okay? Wish Ezra all the best, you know, with the mental health and all that. But you don't need Ezra to continue. But anyway, that's my little mini rant with that. Uh, and we still probably going to rant on it some more. But anyway, uh, the Flash at the end of the day should be the easiest way. Y'all seen the Flash TV show? You see how many times Barry done messed up the multiverse? Barry, done me Barry messes up every time. It's always Barry's fault. When in doubt, blame Barry because it was definitely Barry's fault. So that's all we need. 
they can clean up everything. They can recast whoever they want to recast. They can keep whoever they want to keep. It's the easiest way to go about it. And I'm glad that James Gunn came in knowing this and is going to go through with that. Now, we have more information about that later, but we'll get to that. Universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects. Okay, so he ain't really say nothing about Aquaman 2. However, what's interesting about Aquaman 2 is that we've read reports and we've seen this where we don't know which Batman is going to be in Aquaman 2. Jason Momoa just last week talked about how he shot scenes with both Michael Keaton and with Ben Affleck. So the real question is, I think, what happens with the Batman in The Flash? Because The Flash Batman, they have multiple Batman too. They got Michael Keaton and they got uh, Ben Affleck. Who's going to stay? Who's going to go? Who knows? Depending on whatever happens with the Flash might affect which scene they keep or edit or delete in Aquaman 2. So right now, it's probably anyone's best guess as to who the actual Batman is going to be moving forward. Now, whoever it's going to be, whether it's Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck, whatever, I still think that they're going to get another Batman later. I still think they'll get another one. But we have to wait to see which one they choose. And I think that they're going to wait to see the reception from The Flash to determine that. So anyway, all right, let's go. Next, which I'm going to tell you about now. So Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film television and gaming. This Good. first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. Okay. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. Okay, okay. Now, I don't really know too much about the creature commandos or whatever. Um, it looks like that's going to be TV animation, and I want y'all to pay attention to this too. I want y'all to pay attention to what's TV, what's movies, and so on, because we're gonna have, that's going to connect later on. Um, but uh, creature commandos, look, it looks like they're bringing Weasel in from the Peacemaker series or whatever. I hated Weasel from the Suicide Squad. Like, I just did not care for him. But if they want to throw him in animation, that's fine. He was already a wacky character to begin with. Do whatever you want to do. Um, but uh, this is like, whatever it is, I don't think that this is like going to get everybody going. Um, but I will, I'm will. i going to give everything a chance at least. Um, but I, like I said before, I like the fact that they're at least going to um, have everything connected and have people jump back and forth depending but you know this is something that's very indicative to james gunn james gunn likes those weird wacky type of characters and stories um that a lot of people just haven't heard of don't know about um and he's gonna bring some humanity to them he's gonna make them he's gonna make you try and care about them you know one way or another um but let's go on to the next thing uh that is coming up plays them in live action the next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is gonna team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world and I can't wait for people to see it. All right, so uh, this is going to be a uh, live action, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it is it's funny because i kind of predicted uh i posted this on twitter before um i said that there was going to be uh some sort of spinoff for uh peacemaker that he was going to announce and um and this is it like this is the one it's they're not i don't think they're doing peacemaker season two yet i think they're going to do this spinoff of waller having viola davis be the main one and then 
Um, maybe they'll do Peacemaker down the road. Um, but I'm here for it. I mean, you know, you had me at Viola Davis. Um, but not only that, I like the fact that uh, you have Crystal Henry coming back. So uh, in case you don't know, she wrote, like he said, Watchmen. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen Watchmen on HBO, my goodness, like, go see it. <laughs> you know, Watchmen is fantastic. Uh, so you had me there. Um, I haven't seen Doom Patrol, so I don't really know Jeremy Carver's work, but I've heard Doom Patrol is really, really good. So um, this is more than enough to get me on board to check it out and to see what's going to happen. So I'm I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, all right, let's move on and see what else we got. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay. All right. So 2025. All right. I'm not going to post it up yet. But um, the mere fact that he's writing this, he's been in talks or maybe considerations of directing it um and they have a date i mean this is it's it's getting very very this is going to be big this is going to set the tone this is going to really be like okay dc are y'all about this business or not right marvel came out the gun swinging with iron man even though even though Marvel was not trying to make Iron Man the big thing like that. You, to if in case you didn't know, the reason why they had the choice, they were they had Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man. And if I'm not mistaken, the uh original producers actually wanted Captain America to kick off the MCU. However, they did a marketing focus group with a bunch of little kids cuz toys and merchandise that sells everything that's literally what drives everything they were like which one of these toys would you want to play with and all the kids picked the iron man toy so they was like well now we're gonna make an iron man movie because we want to sell the iron man toys so it's not like iron man was like the no-brainer it got lucky that it got so big but now when you cross over to dc hey superman is your big dog that is your main thing. And if you get this wrong, if this doesn't work, it's just going to be a lot harder to bring other people on board for the rest of whatever this vision is. So that's all I'm saying is just the fact that like, yes, Superman is, you have to get it right. You have to. Um, now, following James Gunn on Twitter, uh, it seems as though he he is really, really all into Grant Morrison, the writer, and um, he wrote uh, Superman, All-Star Superman. And I'm not going to lie. All-Star Superman was boring to me. I did not care about All-Star Superman. Um, I understand the themes that he likes, and I get why James Gunn likes that. Um, but... Superman is, and I know some people say that it's not the case, but like Superman is not the easiest character to write for because there are certain, like you can only do so many origin stories, you know, and then there's so many things that he can do before he just gets kind of boring, like to really challenge him, you know. So, um, James Gunn, I think, will probably do something where Superman, you know, feels isolated, feels like an alien, feels like a loser, but then he's the beacon of hope, blah, blah, blah. Either way, you're going to have to make it. To adapt that to film is going to be tough because I remember watching the animated. They did an animated uh, Superman All-Star. So if you want, and we know the animated movies don't miss, if you want, you can go watch the animated Superman All-Star movie. And to me, it just wasn't like one of the strongest ones. It was okay. It just wasn't the strongest, you know? So I also know that James Gunn has a very particular style 
You know, I am not saying, and I'm trying to make sure I'm clear with this. I'm not comparing the two people. The same way you can watch a Tarantino movie and be like, yo, that's Tarantino, because he has a distinctive voice and style. That's how James Gunn movies usually are. Like, he has a very distinct, like, you can hear his writing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way he writes for Guardians of the Galaxy is very similar to how he writes with um, the Suicide Squad, you know, if you pay attention. So I'm I'm very curious to see um, what he does with Superman, but it's, I'll just say that there's a lot riding on it because if you drop the ball with Superman, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, you still got Batman in your back pocket, and that's always a, a Joker card right there, no pun intended, but you got to get Superman right too, especially especially if you decide not to bring Henry Cavill back because you already pissed off a whole bunch of Snyder fans that you didn't bring Henry Cavill back. So if you miss with whoever you cast and whatever this movie does, if you miss, they will never let James Gunn hear the end of it ever. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Let's keep going. Uh, no, he did not do Brightburn, uh, Eric. He actually uh, he just produced it. He didn't um, he didn't write and direct it. Uh, I well, don't quote me on the right. I know he didn't direct it, but I know he produced it. Um, but anyway, let's go on. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called lanterns this is a story of a couple of green lanterns john stewart and hal jordan and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there but this is really a terrestrial based tv show which is almost like true detective with a couple of green lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct earth in it they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the dcu okay i like the sound of that i like the sound of the fact that, first of all, my man John Stewart is finally about to get on here. I love it. Now, this is going to be a live-action TV series, so I'm here for that. Um, you know, let me just throw Sterling K. Brown's name out there. My man's been wanting to play John Stewart for a long time. Uh, but matter of fact, shoot, if, John, if Jonathan Majors ain't too busy, he can go play that too. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can go play him. If you've seen Devotion, which I recommend, go watch Devotion. It's a good movie. Um... Jonathan Majors can play John Stewart easily. But anyway, um, I love the fact that they're doing that. Um, and uh, uh, not only are we going to get the Green Lanterns and stuff like that, but I like the fact that whatever mystery they are looking at, whatever mystery they're investigating, it's going to tie into something bigger. Because here's the thing, especially for my, my comic fans out there, you know the Green Lanterns, when they get involved with stuff, they not really here to be like, oh, man, somebody robbed a bank. Oh, man, somebody blew up a building. That's not their job. Like, it is if they got some free time. But the Green Lanterns are like, yo, we here for that cosmic business. So if they're getting involved in something that is huge, a huge mystery, and it requires two of them, that means that you got some cosmic level shenanigans about to happen so i'm thinking it's got to be one of two things one you might have to be dealing with uh the anti-monitor or two classic go-to dark side aka their version of thanos so maybe it's the anti-life equation maybe uh um dark side is out here doing something maybe ooh, maybe we go to the uh to the whatchamacallit young justice and it's the light Ooh man, if James Gunn does that, he's gonna be slick. If it's the light, I ain't gonna tell y'all what the light is or what what that's about. But that would be actually that'd be way better. He needs to do the light. Ooh, that group right there. Ooh way. Um, but anyway, um, anything with the Green Lanterns, I'm here for. Um, and we'll see how that goes and what it does. And I just like the fact that whatever it is, it's tying into a bigger story that's going to go on so in my mind when he says that it sounds like it sounds almost similar to in the mcu where you had thor being like yo that's an infinity stone right and then like the moment we started really getting into the infinity stones comic fans we knew like here come thanos 
You know, so I'm thinking whatever this mystery is, it's going to be the thing that's going to uh, um, tease maybe the end of the first chapter or phase. And we're going to see who the big bad is or whatever is going on. Uh, hold on. I got a comment. Hold on. Nelson, what you got? What if Superman was the first Kryptonian born on Earth after his parents left Krypton before it was destroyed? Also, I want to see more black superheroes. First of all, you know, I'm here for that all day uh, with the black superheroes. Um, first Kryptonian born on Earth after his parents left Krypton before it was destroyed. That would be very, that would be interesting. I don't know. I'm going to say that knowing James Gunn, I don't think he'll go that route only because I get the strong impression that he really wants Superman. If he if he keeps on trying to lean on Grant Morrison's ideology or his philosophy, uh, he really wants to lean on Superman being a foreigner. He really wants him to be an alien in both senses of the term. Um, and I feel like that's going to be one of the things that he's going to lean on the most. Um, so I don't know if we'll get that direction. I, I think it's just less likely. Um, but okay, let's move on uh, to the next project. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters we are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television. Okay, so The Authority. Now, I do have... Um, now, this is not a huge, widely known household name type of comic, um, but uh, I get the feeling, I get the feeling that if they do what they do with the authority, because the whole point of them is, you know, they're a group of like other superheroes or super powered individuals who are like, man, we ain't the Justice League, right? Like. The Justice League does everything the right way. We just going to get the job done, right? Like the authority is like, look, we see something is wrong. We see something is bad. We don't care about these laws. We don't care about like all this property damage. We just going to, the ends justify the means, okay? So I get the impression that the authority is going to do in dc what the boys do over at amazon don't be surprised now this is a movie it is a movie that they're gonna do with this i'm not gonna be surprised if they make this rated r and i'm not gonna say it's like their suicide squad but um the authority don't play they they do not play they don't play this is not you're not gonna go out there and be like oh let me go get the authority toys for my kids they are the pure definition of anti-heroes so um i think that that's actually a really good way to counter you know because like right after the green lanterns then you get the authority i think that's a really nice way to kind of go from a big top down look to a bottom up look um and that'll be i think that'll be a good way to give dc some good balance you know in terms of like the perspective of these stories so I'm looking forward to this mainly because I don't know what to really expect outside of they better not be playing no games like th this. This is not something that should be PG-13 at all. They need to um, handle their business. All right, let's keep going. The world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as the Mascara, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The intro. All right, bro. Hold on now. Hold on now. You can't just be coming in here dropping these things. Now, I let you slide. I let you slide by saying Green Lancers was going to be like True Detective. But you over here talking about Paradise Lost is going to be like Game of Thrones? You know, that's some big. You know, sometimes I feel like 
I feel like people just be saying things and they hype stuff up so much that they set things up to fail because it's usually high expectations. I've always said this when the, the, whatever you set your expectations to, that's how high your fall to disappointment might be. Because now the challenge that you have is if you say it's going to be up here with Game of Thrones, it better be Game of Thrones, if not better. But if it's not, if it, if it's even just a little bit less, now nah, it's a fail. Mm-mm, nah, mm-mm. you didn't hit the mark. But I do like the idea of of this live action, you know, a uh, uh, story. And from what I understand, this actually is going to take place before the events of the Wonder Woman movies. So that might mean that Wonder Woman is either on there. Um, depending on the time frame, maybe she's not born yet or created, um, or maybe she's a little girl who knows, but this is supposed to take place before the first wonder woman movie. Um, what I would like to see, I would love for them to introduce and talk about the Greek gods. You know, I would love for them to have those type of situations happen. Um, because that was something I thought the first wonder woman movie lacked. I thought we could have used more of the Greek gods and those. There's always drama, by the way. The Greek stories, Greek mythology, it's always a soap opera. So if you go that route, because y'all know Zeus is (laughs) Zeus is a problem. Um, Papa is a rolling stone. Okay, but uh, uh, you could have a lot of dramatic stories there. But I'm just here. I'm just here because you better not waste this, James Gunn. You better not talk about some paradise lost and you do not have the gall to bring on Nubia. Yes, I'm talking about Wonder Woman's fine black Amazonian sister, Nubia. If we don't have Nubia, throw the whole show away. What's the point? Why? Do this. This has to include Nubia. If it doesn't, I call foul. I call foul um, 110%. So that's the one thing I will be looking for in all of this. I don't even care if Wonder Woman is not in it. I want to see where Nubia is at. That's it. Uh, but anyway, um, what we got? Didier, what you got? He's comparing everything to HBO properties. I noticed that. I did peep that too. I did peep that. Um, so we'll have to see, you know. But I mean, still, like, HBO's got a good slate of things. So, you know, you got to be careful with them comparisons. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's move on. ...of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Okay, all right. So, uh, I stand corrected. Whether it was um, Michael Keaton, Batflack, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They are not going to be the main DCU Batman. They will be in it, but it's going to be multiverse stuff. But the main Batman, apparently, is going to be starting off in the Brave and the Bold. Now, um, I think this means a couple things. One... I don't think you're going to be able to bring in a young Batman into this mix, right? So I don't think you can bring in a um, Robert Pattinson level Batman here. You might have to bring in a Batman that's got a couple years on him, okay? Now, first of all, I would love, and I think the best cast right now would be Jensen Eccles. Remember uh, Dean from Supernatural? Jensen Eccles, I think, would be fantastic. He's already voiced Batman in animation. Okay, let's be. What, what, what did James Gunn say? He wants people to be the same thing across the board, right? So I would have no problem with Jensen Eccles voicing, still doing his animation gig, and now starring as him. And I think he could give you a nitty gritty Batman and a good suave Bat, uh, Bruce Wayne. I think he could do both. But anyway, the fact that we got Damian Wayne coming in, I want y'all to pe- Ooh, I want y'all to peep a couple things here. People a couple things. First of all, we're not getting no 
origin story from Batman again. Great. We already seen it. Leave Thomas and, and Mary, you know, uh, uh, you know, Martha Wayne alone. Like they don't drop the pearls too many times. They dead. Leave them alone. They gone. What I like about this is two things. One, we potentially can have an experienced Batman that can live up to <laughs> the heightened version of Batman that he's become today. In other words, I want to see the ninja Batman. I want to see the prep time Batman. I want to see the paranoid Batman. I want to see the psycho, the, the psycho Batman. I want to see all of those Batman in one. Because he's been through some things for a long time. Beyond that, we have Damian Wayne. What does that mean that we have Damian Wayne? One, in case it, for some of y'all that don't know, Batman um got roofied and um without his consent ended up having a kid. He got played. Uh went on to Mari, found out that Damian was his, and he took him in. Okay. Um, and now that he's taken him in and made him Robin, as you know, that also means whatever happened to the first Robin, Dick Grayson, whatever happened to the other Robin, Jason Todd, oh, all of them already exist. Which means, as he said, we're going to get introduced to the rest of the Bat family. Yeah, we're going to get Batman. Yeah, we're going to get Damien. But Nightwing is in full effect, okay? He out there in Bloodhaven. We're going to get Nightwing in full effect. We probably going to mess around and get Jason Todd, Red Hood, a.k.a. in full effect as well. And maybe Batgirl, you know, maybe they'll, they'll bring her in. But all I know is we're going to get all these Bat families introduced one way or another, and I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. We ain't got to do no long, drawn-out stuff. They just exist. They're just here already. Let me also just say this. If you've ever watched um, The Umbrella Company, what was what was the little kid guy? Was, that, was he number five? The one that could do the portal jumping? I think he was five, if I'm not mistaken. I need Damien to get have that same energy. If you know, if you know anything about Damien Wayne, Damian Wayne will slice and dice you and not even ask questions. He's not going to ask questions. Oh, you you the target? You the mark? You already dead. Because I threw, I, slice, slice, slice. I threw a couple bat, you know, bat stars at your neck like five times over. You didn't even know it. You was dead. Like, Damian Wayne is a problem. Because as he mentioned, he was raised by assassins. Okay? Not not little ninjas, not little ninjas. No, he was raised by assassins, okay? That's all he knows is how to kill people. That's it, okay? He got one job, and that's for you to die. So he ain't no regular kid. I need somebody, whether, whether it's a young actor or whatever, I need somebody to bring all that number five energy to, to Damian Wayne, and if you can nail that, everything else will work everything else will work so anyway i i am more excited for this this brave and the bold because like i said we ain't dealing with all this other origin stuff we hitting the ground running we have established characters i'm here for this so if superman does not pan out this is it this is gonna have to be the only thing that's gonna resurrect or maintain interest in the DCU. Because while Superman is the heart of DC, Batman is the backbone. Batman is the spine, okay? Your, your backbone go out, you, you, you just standing there looking at, that's it. You just paralyzed, and you can't see nothing, and you just... You not moving without Batman is my point. Yes, you got to have Superman because that's where it started. He's the pinnacle. He's the hero. We get it. He's the role model. But you not moving without Batman. So they got to make sure that they put every... And I'm, I'm going to say this also. 
I don't want James Gunn directing Batman Brave and the Bold. I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, and that's no disrespect to him. But I think that given how he writes and what he writes, I think that that would be better suited for someone else to take on. He can't write and do everything. That would be problematic. And I think he knows that. But, ooh, come on, Dan the man. This is why you the man. Come on. I was just about to say it. You said it. You said it. That's it. You bring in Ben Affleck to come and do Brave in the Bowl, you win. You win. Y'all know how great Ben Affleck is as a director? He ain't, he ain't really missed so far. And matter of fact, I, I throw one more. I throw one more at you. I throw one more at you. If it's not Ben Affleck, put John Krasinski in there. Come on now. You wasn't ready for that. Y'all wasn't ready for that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You put John Krasinski, Quiet Place, one and two. Go look at his record. Or you put Ben Affleck. It's a win. It's an automatic win. Automatic win. That's it. All right. Uh, let me grab this comment from my man. Just my opinion reviews. How many of these do you think will be rated R? Mm, great question. Um, Let's see. Have we gone through everything yet? Uh, okay. We haven't gone through all of them yet, but I would say I don't really know too much about Creature Commandos in terms of like its mature nature or not, but because I think it's such a throwaway and it's animation and it's probably going to be HBO Max, I could say I think that might be one. Waller might be another one. I mean, if Peacemaker was kind of rated R, why not Waller? I don't think Superman Legacy will be rated R. There's, come on now, you need everybody you can to get into Superman. Lanterns, I don't think you need Lanterns to be rated R. So, like, that's probably going to be PG 13 as well. The Authority definitely is going to be rated R. It has to be. Throw this away if it ain't rated R. So, that's three. Paradise Loss, that's iffy. It depends on how Game of Thrones ish you want to get. Because. If we get, I mean, how how Game of Thrones are we talking here? You know, because Game of Thrones was definitely rated R. But I'm going to keep that off because I don't think it needs it. I don't think it needs it. Batman Brave and the Bold, that's PG-13. They ain't going to make that rated R. They're not crazy. They, you're not going to take your potential billion-dollar moneymaker and make that rated R. You're just not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Um, and there's only one more we'll get to it but I think in total maybe five I think five of these are going to be rated R it's ten things that were announced and we'll get to the rest of them ten in total but I think only five will be rated R and the rest will be PG-13 or less that's that's my that's my account right now for now Um, all right let's get back to what James Gunn had to say we almost done Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my All right. Booster Gold. So, here's the thing. Um Booster Gold I get the feeling that this might be right up James Gunn's alley because he likes losers. Uh, and according to him, he felt like he was a loser when he was growing up, blah, 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 blah. So he can connect to these things. I'm not going to be surprised if he decides to write this and do it because this is very similar to Peacemaker in a sense. A guy who's trying to be something that he's not. But um, Booster Gold is like, I don't know, comic fans, where we at? C level, maybe D level, like character. Like, he's not somebody you got to be deep in the comics to know Booster Gold. Deep, deep. Um, but it's funny because I know a lot of people were talking about, like, oh, James Gunn gonna bring everybody over from the Marvel and stuff like that. 
And it's funny because it's a shame that Chris Pratt is so, I wouldn't say oversaturated, but it's a shame that he's gotten the rep that he's gotten because honestly, this would be a perfect role for him. Like, I don't care what people say if it's, oh, that's just your friend, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, it's actually a really, really good role, a perfect role for him. You know, I mean, if he's done as Star Lord, if he's done in Marvel, he should come over and play Booster Gold. Now, of course, you can get other people to play it, but I'm just going to say, like, if you really want people to switch over and pay attention to this character that has zero traction, zero name recognition, the least you could do is sprinkle in Chris Pratt, at least, and they would get some attention. You know, I mean, the only if it wasn't Chris Pratt, I would say maybe Ryan Reynolds, but he's Deadpool. And like he's too good at Deadpool. You know, like if Ryan Reynolds had nothing else going for him, all right, maybe. Because the thing is, Booster Gold is like you want someone who can do comedy, not slapstick comedy, but somebody that can handle comedy. And that's something I think Chris Pratt could do, but I don't know. We'll see how, how he goes, but this is definitely a property. I think that, you know, if James Gunn had to write, direct something, this would be it mainly because he's already done it with Peacemaker. There's no way. And again, I'm just, you know, thinking, uh, theorizing, I can't see a booster gold TV series being outside of the, the tone and the vibe of Peacemaker. It's going to be serious at times. It's going to be funny at times. It's going to have some crazy action at times. And that's it. It's just going to be a hodgepodge of stuff. But anyway, uh, let me know how y'all feeling about Booster Gold. Is that something you're looking forward to or you going to give it a chance? Let me know. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents. Whereas Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings- So, all right, Supergirl. Um, all I'll say for Supergirl is the fact that, like, I haven't read that more current Tom King run of that story. Um, they change up her origin just a little bit um, where, you know, as he said, like, I guess she's still on Krypton and she sees everybody dying, the planet dying, or whatever, and she's just watching all this stuff. But um, it's going to be I'm I'm very well, I don't know if it depends on who plays the role. Um, I think that it's a interesting move that they're making this. Not a TV series, but a movie, because the Supergirl TV show on CW like that actually was decent. Like, you know, it was better than that Batwoman show that. <laughs> but, um, you know. So Supergirl has a little bit of name recognition in the in the ether, right? Like people kind of like, oh, Superman cousin. Okay, all right, all right, I, I could get with that. So I think people can give that a chance. But I haven't. I've only read like a little bit of the Tom King run, and so far, I ain't feeling it. So far, it's a little boring. Now maybe it gets better. I don't know, but. The the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. I was just like, this this what y'all leading with this, but I don't know. I, I'll finish it and then I'll see where I can go with it. But here's the thing that James Gunn's not saying, but I'm gonna say it. While you do have Supergirl, I want you to consider something. Why do you 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 just got done saying? that you was about to do a Superman movie. And within not too long from that, you about to bring in Supergirl. And then you said that the Green Lanterns are about to discover some sort of 
situation that's a larger mystery for the greater DCU. Do y'all have any idea how bad ish is about to get where you need two Kryptonians in the same universe? You need two? Go back and look at the animated DC movies. How long did it take for them to finally bring Korra back into the mix? They had at least half of their slate done. Superman doing this, they fighting this, they going to war, doing all this other crazy stuff. But when Supergirl came into the mix, oh, you going against Dark Side, you going against every that you need that much muscle to go against something huge if you're gonna bring two Kryptonians in this early. And if you've been watching Young Justice, I won't spoil it. You see what they did with Supergirl as well. I'm not going to spoil that. But all I'm going to say is, if they're bringing Supergirl in this early, in the beginning of chapter one of the DCU, they about to throw some things down. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Uh, and by the way, because this is going to be a film, I think this is also going to be PG-13. I think that's going to be the case. Um, but they are setting the bar very, very high. OK, she's not going to be just stopping bank robbers. OK, she's not going to be stopping a speeding locomotive train or whatever. If you got two Kryptonians and by the way, she's usually stronger than than uh, Superman. It's going to be a problem. But all right, let's see. Everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway. All right. So I am totally here for Swamp Thing, um, mainly because it adds a huge element to the side of dcu that can include anything supernatural magical mystical etc if there was to be anything else that was going to be rated r i could see swamp thing being that because it is supposed to be a horror now it doesn't have to be rated r because swamp thing could be a dark pg-13 horror but if there was one that could be kind of straddle the fence, I could see Swamp Thing being it. I would love a rated R horror Swamp Thing. I would love that. But I got the feeling that they're going to lean PG-13 and just try to make it more scary than like gory. With that said, um, there was one other thing that James Gunn did not mention in this video. Um, but it is... Um, something that uh was announced which was the batman the batman sequel is also going to come out and that is going to come out what was um in 2025 october 3rd so matt reeves remember that's in the else world that's not the main continuity that is also going to drop october 2025 um and and it's going to be just called uh the batman part two that's it um but Y'all, hold on. Let me let me take this down real quick. I need y'all to look at this real quick. So we got everything announced. We got everything announced. Look at this. Somebody look at this. You got Fantastic Four, February 14, 2025. Avengers, Kang Gang, Kang Dynasty, May 2025. Then you got Soups coming out July 11, 2025. Then you got the Batman Part 2 coming out October 3rd, 2025. Word? 2025 is about to put us in a chokehold. We are going to be in a superhero chokehold one way or another. Let me put this back up so y'all can see this. And I, I really get the feeling that somebody's going to have to move. Somebody. I don't know. Because there's a good gap. I like the gap between uh, Fantastic Four and Avengers Kang Dynasty. I like that gap. I like that gap. But that Avengers Kang Dynasty and that Superman being that close in the summer? I don't know. 
I don't know about that. I got I got a feeling. I got a feeling Superman might move down a little bit later. Might not have to because that's like a good two months. But I wouldn't be surprised if they moved it over just a little bit. But either way, either way, 2025 is going to be a problem for my wallet. Because that looked like four watch, mm, four watch parties. No, two, three, two, maybe two watch parties. It's going to be a problem. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be watching all of that. So I'm here for it. Um, that looks like a fantastic slate. Uh, I don't know who's going to win that between Batman Superman in the same year, which is definitely the better way to go about it. Snyder. And then you got Kang Dynasty. You got an Avengers movie and a Fantastic Four movie. 2025 is coming with all the pressure. It's coming with a lot of pressure. A lot. Uh, Buzz, what you got? Thank you so much. What up? I've not been here in a minute. Buzz, we missed you, but we're glad that you're here, man. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, you know, right. See, D, this is what I'm talking about. Like, somebody gonna have to get delayed. Somebody, you cannot have competition that close while you're trying to advertise and market. Somebody's gonna get pushed. And here's the other thing. If I'm not mistaken, I think, I think. There's an Avatar movie coming in 2025. And that Avatar movie is going to come in December, whether anybody likes it or not. In other words, whatever movies think they about to come out in December, they can move now. Because Avatar 3 is coming in 2025, and everybody's going to have to move and get out the way. As James Cameron, by the way, now has in the top five movies, Three movies in the top five of box office all time. In the top five. Nobody's checking this man. Nobody's saying nothing. You thought you had a movie. You thought you had a movie in 2025. You did not have a movie in the month where Avatar 3 is coming out. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But anyway, so we got all of that. We got the Batman, Who's the Gold, Supergirl, um, uh, Swamp Thing, Paradise Lost, ba- uh, uh, Brave and the Bold, The Authority, Lanterns, Superman Legacy, Waller, Creature Commandos. There's a whole lot going on. There's a whole lot going on. Let's finish off what uh, James Gunn said. And then uh, there was some more news with all these other things. And we'll get into that in a second. But let's finish off what he had to say. Those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. All right, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. No, um, I will echo what he said, though. Um, That... He's talking the good talk. That's what I want to hear from an executive at the top, which is story has to come first. I've told y'all that multiple times. I don't care about the actor. I don't care about the character. I need the story first because the story amplifies the character and the actor excels and, and, and elevates the character as well. All of that works, but you got to give us a great story first so if the writing is fantastic and the directing is cool and the vision is clear we can be on board now he's talking a good talk but that doesn't mean everything's about to actually happen and be executed properly there's a very good chance that some of these things are going to fail so i want to make that clear just because i'm excited or i'm optimistic of the truths that he is saying about going about uh, uh, making this universe does not mean that I automatically assume 
everything he's about to do or produce is going to be gold. This could still all go down the toilet. DC could still DC. Okay. All right. We've been through this before. We've been given false hope before. Y'all remember the time when people was like, oh, okay, DC going to be saved because Zack Snyder here. And then we was like, oh, okay, it's cool. Uh, Jeff Johns is going to be a producer. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Jim Lee not. Mm -mm. Uh, no, it's cool. J Walter Hamada's here. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, AT&T done bought them. And mm -mm. Uh, no, no, no. It's fine now. Zaslav's here. Mm -mm. We've been through this gamut before. We've seen this movie many times. James Gunn could just be the next chapter of the same failing book. We don't know. Maybe. And I think as a true comic book fan, comic book movie fan, I want all of these to succeed. I want all of them to succeed, right? I need, I, I, I don't care. I don't play that stupid thing on social media. Oh, I'm team Marvel. I'm team DC. That's stupid. You're entitled to your favorites, of course. But the tribalism is dumb to me because at the end of the day, I want a great DC movie. I want a great MCU movie. I want a great Sony movie. I want a great, oh, I want them all to be great. I don't think anybody sits here realistically saying to themselves, I want to see bad movies. Nobody wants to go waste their time with that stuff. We all want to see great products. So even if I'm ripping on terrible movies like Venom 2 and Morbius, it's because I care because I know how great they could have been. Anywho, um, let me grab this comment real quick. Let me know how you felt about those announcements real quick. Um, if there are any properties that you're actually looking forward to. Uh, and while you do that, I'm grab these comments. Then we're going to jump into the last bit of news. Black cinema. What you got? Uh, don't be scared of DC 2025. Don't move. Stand your ground. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm standing in line for both, for all the movies. Like I'm, I'm here for them all. I want them all. Give them, get, give, give me all the DC and the Marvel movies at the same time. I don't care. I want all of them. Uh, but thank you so much for that. Uh, D what you got? If Superman movie don't hit, listen. Well, listen, I think, I think if Superman doesn't hit, that's strike one. If Batman don't hit, that's strike two and three, I think. Because if you can't get Batman and Superman together, what else you got? What? Hold on. What else do they have? So they got the authority and eh, whatever that, that don't, nobody is banking on that. Uh, you got Superman, Batman, uh, and Supergirl, Supergirl gonna save you? Supergirl? Again, it's no shade to her being a female character and nothing like that. But she's not as popular as Batman or Superman. So you mean to tell me that if you can't get your top tier franchise players together, that your bench players are gonna save the day? Crazier things have happened, but come on now. Is that really gonna elicit a lot of trust? You know? That's like Marvel having a billion dollar Ant-Man movie, but they can't get an Avengers movie together. Nah, we can't be backwards with it, but we'll see. We'll see. Christopher, what you got? Keeping those old directors in their feelings uh, with this slate of superhero movies. Kang gang. Hey, that's all good. Um, I have no problem with that. I'm glad. Let these things thrive and push as much as possible because I love every bit of it. I am all here for that uh let's see what do we have okay so we have one thing I, we talked about this we talked about how um the acts of zaslov so zaslov has axed a whole bunch of stuff um and uh one of those things was batgirl got rid of it for tax reasons or whatever and um uh they had a screening funeral for this movie this movie was done this movie was like whatever it was done it was supposed to go on hbo max but they was like nah we not doing that and they just killed this movie like that was just sad but now james gunn's other half aka uh peter saffron 
he has come in and he actually has sided with this. He said shelving Batgirl was the right decision. Um, and this is what he had, ended up having to say. Batgirl's a character that inevitably we will include in our story. On the Batgirl front, it's not about the late, it's not about late in the process um of the film getting canceled i saw the movie and there are a lot of incredibly talented people in front of and behind the camera on that film but that film was not releasable and it happens sometimes that film was not releasable i actually think that you know uh zaslav and the team uh made a, the right decision uh that the team made a very bold and courageous decision to cancel it because it would have hurt dc it would have hurt those people involved yikes yikes bro bro you saying a whole lot you saying a whole lot hold on hold on because here's here's the thing he said that where is that there we go he said that this would have hurt dc you saying that this movie was so bad it would have hurt y'all? Hurt y'all? Like what is what does hurt mean? It wasn't gonna make y'all money. Was it gonna be panned by fans or something? Didn't he say he said he watched it right? Okay, he said he saw the movie. He didn't say it was a good movie. <laughs> he never said it was a good movie. He just said I saw the movie. And there are some great people behind and in front of the camera. Ooh, he might as well just said, I saw the movie. Bless your heart. You ever seen an ugly baby? Ooh, look at the baby. Bless your heart. Yeah, bless his heart. That's what he just said about Batgirl. Yikes. Yikes. So I think the good news is the fact that Batgirl is still going to come in. Like I told y'all, we have the Bat family already. So maybe Leslie Grace is still going to have a chance to come in and play Batgirl, right? That'd be fine. Um, but it does suck that her movie just mm, apparently was so bad that it would hurt. It would hurt. And it's so crazy to me because if y'all recall, that's not what the people were saying. Because the people were saying that Batgirl was decent. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's relative because all I remember is that the Batgirl test screening score was the same one as Black Adam. So, if Batgirl tested the same way as Black Adam, and during that time, y'all was loving Black Adam, what are we doing here? What are we saying? Mm, 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 mm. Anyway, that's it for, um, for Batgirl, at least for a movie. Um, what else do we have? We got so much little stuff that dropped. Uh, then you had Zachary Levy, Levi, uh, Sh aka Shazam. Um, he's been getting caught up in some drama as well. Uh, I don't know if y'all been paying attention to this or whatever. Um, but basically he's been, he's been getting dragged all on social media, especially Twitter, um, because of his potential political views or potential, um things that he said or on uh joe rogan's podcast um but here's some things here um he's been facing backlash on social media ever since he posted an anti-pfizer tweet on january 29th responding to a twitter uh, user who wrote do you agree that pfizer is a real danger to the world levy posted hardcore agree and many social media users have interpreted his response as being anti-vaccine, giving the, act, the actor and Warner Brothers a potential press tour obstacle as Shazam 2 gears up for its March release date. Now, uh, James Gunn responded to this during the uh, press event and said, uh, actors and filmmakers that I work with are going to say things that I agree with and things that I don't agree with. And that's going to happen. I don't have a list of things that somebody should say because of what I think. And as you know, uh, and, and, you know, I can't be changing my plans all the time because an actor says something that I don't agree with. All right. All right. 
By the same token, if somebody's doing something morally morally reprehensible, that's a different story. We have to take all that stuff into account. It's a balance. It's a modern world. And it's a different place. Let me read that again. By the same token, if somebody's doing something morally reprehensible, then that's a different story, is it? Okay. Put a feather in that. Put a put a bookmark in that. Can, I'm gonna read that one more time. Just I just I just I want us to remember the words. Just, just remember the words. Let me make it a little bigger for the people. If somebody he, she, they, whoever is doing something morally reprehensible. That's a different story. You said it. You said it. Anywho, honestly, I really don't care about Zachary Levy. I don't care about Shazam. Um, Shazam can win, lose, whatever. Don't really care. Don't really care. Um, but... He's created the standard now, right? For for like gun is gun has said it. He said it. All right. Let's y'all y'all know I got it loaded up. Come on now. Um of course there's also been talk about gun and Henry Cavill. And we talked about this that like, you know, the Snyder fans are pissed off. You know, they are so mad that um the Snyder fans are so mad that Henry Cavill was not recast or that he was not continuing. They've been saying that Gunn fired him. And, you know, even though Gunn had a whole meeting with Cavill and he explained to him what they were doing. And, you know, Henry Cavill came back and was like, hey, I'm Superman. Then the next day he was like, nah, all right, I talked to Gunn. No, I'm not Superman. And a lot of people got upset about that. So this is what uh, James Gunn actually had to say about that whole situation. He said that Henry Cavill wasn't fired as Superman. He just wasn't hired. Well, you can't fire somebody that wasn't hired, right? I mean, you know, and I and I had this conversation with some people online because they were like, oh, so you mean if you're a CEO and somebody's already working there, and, and you're the new management, you can fire them. That's not what we're talking about. That's not the that's not the situation. Henry Cavill did not have a contract beyond that. He just said, I'm back. He didn't say, I'm back, and I signed a contract for five more DC movies. Where's the contract? That's not what he said. He just said, right after Black Adam... Right after The Rock went behind the other DC executives' backs to get Henry Cavill in, The Rock, again, in fairness, James Gunn didn't even have the job yet. He just said, I'm back. Imagine somebody retiring from the NBA and they go play a, a, on a 10-day contract and they say, yo, I'm back. And 10 days go by. And nobody signs them. Are they fired? No, you just wasn't picked up. You're just not hired. Because the team is probably going in a different direction. So, sorry, not sorry. I know people want to try to find blame into something, but you cannot blame James Gunn because he didn't have the same vision that you wanted. You wanted Henry Cavill to continue. Not y'all, but the other people. Y'all wanted Henry Cavill to continue. And here's the thing. I got nothing against him. I like Henry Cavill as Superman. I really do. Like, he's a very fine Superman to me. I have no problem with him. But that's not the focus for James Gunn. James Gunn came in with one job, start over. Start over does not mean keep everything. Now, of course, he's going to have to play around with a couple things here or there just because of what he has to clean up. But James Gunn is not obligated to keep 
anything else going. That includes continuing Henry Cavill. Now, at the same time, at the same time, if you want someone to blame, if you if, let's just say you a hardcore Cavill fan, you like E Man, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. That's fine. Blame Zaslav because the buck stopped with him. Don't the only person that checks James Gunn is Zaslav. That's it. Ain't no other in between. So you could blame him because he's the one that co-signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh Cavill, you can come back. Oh, James Gunn, you yeah, you come in. Are oh, you gonna you gonna start over? All right, yeah, whatever. Man, whatever. I don't care. Make me some money. Blame Zaslov if you want. But here's what James Gunn had to say about the whole Cavill situation. During the press conference the, uh, to reveal the new DCU plan, Gunn clarified that it's also important to say that Henry Cavill was not fired. Henry was just not hired to be Superman in the Superman movie. There was never a deal there for another movie. And that's not what it was. You can't fire someone that was not hired for something that wasn't going to go through anyway. Now, Zaslav was getting some writers or they were, uh, it was reported before that, uh, before they hired Gunn, that they were exploring a Man of Steel 2 project. They were looking for writers. So it was like in development, but there was no contract signed, at least according to Gunn. So if there was no contract signed, there's nothing to be fired from. Because actors are not obligated to anything except for what they're contracted to be obligated to. So whoever want to be mad, y'all can be mad, but just just say that y'all don't know how the business works. <laughs> just, just say that. Just say y'all don't know how the business works if you really want to be mad. And that'll make more sense, you know. Anyway, uh, the other news that we have, um, we actually, this was really quick. We actually got a quick update for Swamp Thing, which I said, I thought I was, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because I like to see where this can go. Um, it looks like we might already have a director uh, attached, and that is none other than James Mangold, who um, is in talks to tackle the Swamp Thing movie. And I absolutely love that uh james mango if you recall he did the wolverine uh re more recently and he also did um uh logan you know which was a fantastic comic book movie um still criminal that it didn't get oscar nominated but um he's supposedly gonna take over uh swamp thing that's great that's great you're putting together a competent well accomplished solid director for this already and it's not james gunn doing everything i love it i love it so i'm with it that just piqued my interest even more for swamp thing um so i am very very happy about that if that has swayed you in any way let me know um but we have to get to the other other stuff and this is going to be the second to the last issue that we talk about. I've talked about how I told y'all to keep that bookmark. I told y'all to keep that bookmark. We know, especially if you've been here for a while, Ezra Miller has been a menace to society for a while. Ezra Miller has been arrested for abusing, physically abusing, assaulting people, uh, allegedly. That, not allegedly. Ezra got arrested for these things. Um, Ezra has been accused of grooming minors, having cult-like situations with minors on their ranch or whatever, um, creating dangerous situations for young children including having guns and bullets all around where allegedly a witness saw a, a two three-year-old with a bull a baby having a bullet in their mouth whole bunch of nonsense trespassing um theft 
more assault. All of these things on Ezra Miller's record. These are all not just speculation or accusations, but a lot of these have also, Ezra's been arrested for. Uh, just recently, we just talked about how uh, Ezra's uh, pleading guilty to one of these things and only getting, what, like a year probation and $500, you know, for bail or whatever it was. Either way, given Ezra's trans transgressions aside, when WB made, at least the reports were made known, that Ezra's movie, The Flash, might be completely scrapped, which means all that hard work that everybody else put into this movie might be gone because, I don't know, how do you market the movie of a superhero when your main actor is acting like a menace, is acting like a, a supervillain? Like, how do you do that? And you can go check my other previous videos for all the stuff if you really want to get caught up on the litany of issues with Ezra Miller. Litany. Like, we would literally be here for another 30 minutes if we broke this stuff down even further. So once that news came out to Ezra that, hey, your actions are going to cause everybody to lose this movie and nobody, this movie might not even come out. Ezra came out, issued some sort of generic apology through their PR person or whatever. And checked themselves into rehab. And I, I, you know, I try to make sure I am very, very clear with this. I am 110% here for Ezra Mella getting any and all help that is needed. Get whatever mental health help you need, whatever it is. If you need medication, get it. If you need treatment, get it, whatever. But at the same time, just because you getting help does not mean you should avoid consequences and accountability for your actions. Okay. James Gunn had a comment about the Flash movie, and Ezra Miller. And it bothered me a little bit, but I want us to talk about that real quick. Um, because I feel like, I feel like there's a couple, a couple of issues here. A couple of issues. So first of all, here's what uh, James Gunn ended up saying about the Flash, the movie. James Gunn said, I will say here that Flash is probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made all right i have not seen the flash i don't know anyone who's seen the flash so i can't really comment on that or not the only thing that we've heard is the fact that like the flash movie has tested very well we've only heard that like wb really 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 likes the flash movie and that's fine if that's, you know, like, I get it. However, didn't we just have a conversation about setting high expectations and, like, the bar for disappointment? The greatest superhero movie ever? In front of what? You mean to tell me this is better than Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? This is better than Spider-Man 2? This is better than Avengers? This is better than Infinity War? This is better than Endgame? This is better than Captain America Winter Soldier? This is better than The Dark Knight? What are you saying? James Gunn, I'm going to need you to pump your brakes. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Because when you set those expectations high, we're going to go in there saying and thinking now, this thing better be better than all those movies. Because now you set the bar. I was not checking for The Flash. I, I figured, okay, people liked it, and it was good. That's fine. But you out here talking about this is the greatest ever? I want you to understand 
that if this movie is not like, I don't know, damn near a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, on critics, and on fans by the audience, how is that going to make you look as an executive, James Gunn? That is going to be, you, you don't need to set your own bar. Here's the thing. Kevin Feige, I'm sure, because my man has been a pro in the game for a long time. He knew what he had with Infinity War and Endgame. He knew that them things was going to blow people away. What did he say? I don't think I don't you know, I could be wrong, but I don't remember him saying this is going to be the greatest superhero movie ever. He might say something like this is one of our most ambitious projects. Okay. Okay. You know, like oh, this is a huge challenge. Okay. Now, had he said that it was the greatest superhero movie ever, people might have been a little skeptical, but it did kind of meet the bar, you know, at least for a lot of people. But at the same time, it's like, don't overhype stuff. Don't overhype stuff. If DC has yet to learn any lessons, first of all, the only lesson y'all really need to learn was to have an actual plan. But the last thing y'all need to do is over overhype anything. You're still climbing out the gutter. You're still climbing out the gutter. Don't overhype nothing. Let your work speak for itself. All right. The reason why I brought this up was because there was a previous article not too long ago that came out and said some executives at WBD were actually open to the idea of letting Ezra Miller come back and reprise their role as Flash with some conditions more than likely if the movie does great maybe that's one but the other one would also be you know if they i don't know recover well or whatever <sighs> let me go to what was actually said and i think this is uh coming from peter saffron the other the other other exact he said ezra is completely committed to their to their recovery and we are fully supportive of that journey that they're on right now when the time is right when they feel like they're ready to have the discussion we'll all figure out what the best path forward is but right now they are completely focused on their recovery and in our conversations with them over the last couple of months it feels like they're making enormous progress my question for them is this. What is there to discuss? What the hell is there to discuss with Ezra Miller? I mean, if y'all need me to, t I'll say it for you if you want. If y'all don't feel comfortable because Ezra is like in, you know, in recovery. Here's the thing. E e Ezra, you're fired. You're fired. That's what y'all should be saying. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. But you're fired. Why? Because it doesn't matter if Ezra has a full recovery or not. Let me explain why. Do you remember when I told y'all that Ezra was accused of grooming minors and so on and so forth? One of the accusations was that Ezra actually used the character, his character of the Flash as um, an icon or a figure and go around grooming these minors, allegedly, talking about that they were the Flash and, you know, worship me, et cetera, et cetera, or whatever. Or at least that was the impression they were doing. If I'm WB, and you mean to tell me that you are taking my IP, my character, that I have to market to little children, and you're using that to potentially and allegedly groom minors, I don't want nothing to do with you. The moment that movie is done, we're done. And here's the other thing. Let's say that goes away. Let's say that's done. Yep. Uh, the accusation was false. Um, let's just say it magically disappears. Y'all really think that's going to be the end of Ezra Miller's bad PR? Because the thing that Ezra just pled guilty to 
was something that happened or at least was reported almost a year ago. It was months to a year ago. What do you think is going to happen when Ezra comes out and says, yep, fully recovered, great recovery, I'm all good, sorry, y'all, I'm back. Okay, Flash comes out, makes a whole lot of money. Breaking news, this just in, Ezra Miller pleads guilty again for that other, other charge of when Ezra was terrorizing Hawaii. I'm sorry, Iceland. I'm sorry, Hawaii again. How many accusations, how many charges? How, you think this is the last time Ezra's going to have a lawsuit brought against them? Their legal troubles have not gone away. Ezra had a whole restraining order put against them. Why do you want that continued baggage? It's not even done. And I've told y'all this before. If Ezra had maybe just one thing going on, if it was one incident with uh, uh, the physical assault, if it was one thing of like, oh, I had a drunken night. Okay, hey, look, nobody's perfect. Everybody messes up once. We get that. Ezra had... Ezra has a rap sheet, a rap sheet, a whole sheet. What did y'all do to Johnny Depp? Y'all quit. Y'all cut ties with Johnny Depp like that. Recasted that man like that. Pulled a whole Aunt Viv move like that. Just because. He had an ongoing trial, which he later won. I know he had his other issues before, but he later won that. But y'all leaving as the... What is that to discuss? Matter of fact, if I was WB, I'd let him... I would let Ezra know right now, you're fired. And if that causes any mental anxiety or problems, guess what? You're already in treatment. You're already there. Deal with it all there. Maybe you got to add an extra week. I don't know. Bye. What I don't like about this is <sighs> let me read the quote from Saffron real quick and then I'm going to tell you it. He goes on to say, um, Safford and Gunn's enthusiasm for The Flash in particular bodes well for Miller, whose erratic behavior during the COVID pandemic began to alarm studio execs and fans. Added Safford, these four movies, Shazam, The Flash, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, these four movies are terrific. There's no reason why any of the characters and the actors playing those characters are not part of the DCU. There's nothing that prohibits them from happening. Not even reprehensible behavior? Nothing? Nothing is stopping them, but what, what about morally reprehensible behavior? That ain't gonna stop them? I want you to understand how terrible of a precedent and a look that becomes coming from the top. This is coming from the cult. These are the cold Kevin Foggies of DC. You should have just been quiet. You should have just been quiet. You should have been like, mm, no comment. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that an, another time. That would have literally been the better answer than saying, Man, these movies are so great. Nothing's going to stop them from uh, letting us continue on with these characters and actors. And Ezra's in that same mix? With all the nonsense that's attached to Ezra and their name? Really? That's the look that y'all want to have? That's the precedence? That's the image you want to put out there? I thought y'all were here to clean up WB's image. I thought y'all were here to make them look better. I thought y'all were here to make them look competent. But you just gonna leave this door wide open because, hey, if the Flash does good, oh well, Ezra can come right on back. There's nothing that prohibits them. Where's your line? That's all I want to know. God, I wish they would invite more people of color to these press events. Black folks especially. Black press. 
Because I sure would have asked, like, excuse me, I'm not afraid of Ezra Miller or their situation. What is y'all lying? How many times does Ezra need to be arrested? How many accusations, troubling ones involving minors, need to be put out there? How many lawsuits need to be filed against Ezra for this to finally be a line for you? That, I, that, that's a genuine question. Because I guarantee you anybody else with all this rap sheet behind their name wouldn't even get to this point. I just saw this earlier today. Like right before I, I, I was prepping for the live. And Kersey Clemens, who is, you know, she plays uh, Iris West. Um, you know, she's the love interest or whatever in um in the flash. She came in, and I mean, this might be a little this might be a little um company talk, I guess, or whatever. <sighs> but she said this um of her experience on the much delayed film Flash. Uh, Clemens continued by adding, I had a great time. I've known Ezra for years and I loved working with uh, Andy. Despite everything, we had a really great time filming and we did make a really great movie. I hope that despite all the headlines, people really enjoy the movie because what James said about it being the greatest movie ever is true. I believe what he said and I think it's absolutely correct. She also goes on to say, um, oh, I'm sorry, asked what it has been like to read the headlines about their close uh, co-star. Clemens said that it's been absolutely tough. And what people forget is that a lot of people are, a lot of people go through that, but they don't do it with the whole world watching. Although it comes with the territory, it's really unfair and has been hard watching that. Let me read that again. People forget that a lot of people go through that, but they don't do it with the whole world watching. How many people got all these grooming charges and assault charges and trespassing charges and, and lawsuits against them? What percentage of the world is going through this for one person? Now, if you tell me one person has had one situation, I can see that. How many people have gone through all of that within less than two years? And you want me to feel sorry for Ezra? For what? Look, just say go watch my movie. I, I, I really need the DC like PR to help these actors and people out. Just go say... I made a great movie. I had a good time. Go watch the movie. Because my goodness, this press tour for The Flash is already looking like a mess. I told y'all this before. I didn't know how they was going to do any type of PR junkets for The Flash. Because it's a mess. Your lead star is a mess. I don't care what kind of treatment they get. They still going to have to deal with the law. They still going to have to deal with their consequences. They still going to have these questions of like, yo, this just came back, but this just came up from this thing that you did a year ago. Is there more? Okay, there is more. Sorry, I thought it was done. Um, now, okay. And the question also comes up of... Is the Flash movie going to reboot everything? And I think it should, right? But apparently, and James Gunn, you know, at one minute he said it was going to reboot everything, but then the next minute, apparently that might not be the case. So he confirms that the Flash doesn't erase every part of the DCU. And this came from. Um, him uh it was somebody um if you could see that 
it was on Instagram, I believe. Uh, somebody was saying like, yo, James, I'm seriously confused. How is Viola Davis still playing Amanda Waller? Aren't you rebooting the DCEU 100%? That includes Peacemaker, the whole Suicide Squad, and the Snyderverse. Like you said, Robert Pattinson's Batman and jo- Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is Elseworlds story. And James Gunn, because he don't mind like actually answering stuff, um, ended up saying, nope. Flash resets many things, not all things. Some characters remain the same. Some do not. All I all I know is I'm tired of I'm tired of them leaving these doors open because I don't think these doors would stay open for anybody else. Um, and I'll be very honest, I don't think it definitely would be open for anybody black. I don't think it'd be left open for any other person with the person of color. <laughs> so this level of privilege that Ezra gets is unwarranted. And I'm saying that not even on a racial basis. I'm saying that on a meritocracy basis. There's nothing. I don't care. How, I don't care if the Flash makes $3 billion for billion. I don't care. You do not need Ezra Miller. You don't. There's nothing that warrants you. It's not like we're talking about Daniel Radcliffe and Harry Potter. That I could see why y'all would be struggling, right? I could see that, man. Like, yo, we've only had one Harry Potter for like 18 movies. I get that. But Ezra Miller? Who bended back? Who who's bending backwards to go see Ezra Miller in the movie? Nobody's checking for him. Nobody. Whatever. Um, how y'all feel about this Ezra Miller situation? Uh, do you think it matters if the Flash does great? Um, do you think WB should give leave the door open? Should they leave the door open for Ezra Miller uh, to have a, a recovery, a great recovery, and to stay as the Flash? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Buzz, what you got? Ezra Miller's a problem child. Who is responsible for his actions? WB, move on from Ezra. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, Ezra should be responsible for um, their own actions. And um, that's that's literally all I've been talking about in terms of, like, even if you have mental health issues, that doesn't absolve you from the actions that you've committed. Like, you've committed crimes. Not just the things you're accused of. You've literally committed crimes. You literally pled guilty to crimes. Just so that they can sponge your record or whatever. You're guilty. This is not up for debate. We've seen people get kicked off and no longer worked with for less. Why? So the question is, why is the standard different? Now, Buzz, WB pulled a Republican stunt keeping a bad seed with Ezra. Well, well, I'll let that be. I think that speaks for itself. I'll let that be. So we're going to end off with, uh, on a positive note, maybe, you know. Um, And uh, that is that... um, Throughout this whole announcement, and I think some of you have noticed this as well, throughout this whole DC announcement, and James Gunn did say that this was not the full chapter one. Um, He was only giving us basically like the first part or whatever. And that's cool. Um, While he was saying all of that, um, I I just noticed something that um, didn't really add up very well. And part of that was the fact that like, hmm. I'm not seeing a lot of minorities here in terms of the characters. Now, let's be clear. Um, They could hire minority actors to play some some characters. Sure. But what I was talking about was like, "Mm, I didn't really see 
any black characters for the movies. And I'm talking about for the ongoing DCU, for the ongoing thing. So uh, what you got here, Blue Beetle? Yes, that was already established before. Now, Blue Beetle, I think I've read somewhere where they said like those four movies might get into the DCU, but they're still kind of, you know, iffy. But that wasn't something that came from him, right? And even Waller, that came from, that's TV. Oh, we got a Waller TV series. We got Jon Stewart in a TV series. But you don't have any black characters from DC that are in the main DC continuity. We do have in the else world, you know, the non-canon, you know, the other other side of the fence. We got the two black Superman movies that might happen. The Michael B. Jordan one or the 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 Tana Hesey Coates one, maybe. They're just in development, but nothing was actually announced with a movie with a black lead. And there are some great black characters in DC that I'm like, yo, just, like nothing for a movie. And the reason why I say that is because they actually have a John Stewart animated movie, which is great. They also have a Vixen movie animated, which is great. But when we're being very honest about this, there are levels to all this. The animated movies do not, and they're not on the same level in terms of the audience as the TV shows, the live action. And then live action TV shows are not on the same level audience-wise as the movies, right? So I'm like, yo, I'm, I, I tweeted James Gunn directly and uh, he responded, you know, or he reacted, I should say. So uh, I, I, I asked him straight up, you know, I was like, yo, dear James Gunn, today is the first day of Black History Month. Thanks for bringing us Waller and Jon Stewart to TV. But who's going to make history? Y'all see what I did there with Black History, right? Who's going to make history and become the first Black lead in a live-action DCU movie? I want y'all to make sure you understand what I asked this man. Because I took some time to think about this question, just in case if he saw it, read it, reacted, whatever. I'm not talking about TV. I'm not talking about the else world stuff that's not canon. I'm not talking about animation. I'm talking about the main stream, the same energy that you give into the authority, the same energy you give into Supergirl, Batman, and, ba and Superman, the same energy. You ain't have one black character that you could have put in that mix? Not one? Now, here's the thing. He actually reacted, right? And I knew he wasn't going to say nothing. I didn't, I didn't expect him to say nothing. But you know what? Your boy liked it. James Gunn, that's right. He actually liked the tweet, which means he synced it. Okay? He synced it. Mission accomplished. I did not need James Gunn to say anything, but I did want to put him on notice. And I did want to make sure that he noticed that I noticed that he noticed. That's why it's in the article now. So James Gunn, and again, I am not, this is not like a threat. This is not like, oh, you better give us our black characters. I'm just saying, you don't have no excuse. You don't have an excuse because if, if it was a blind spot for you, now it's not. Now it's time to apply that social pressure, right? So right after this, because just like recast T'Challa, I want to get that conversation going. I want people to start looking at. I want people to start talking about the Black characters in DC that you could make a movie off of. Right. 
And I, I I did a poll, you know, to talk about who could be like who people would want. And I think a lot of people have picked like the number one one, you know, like uh, it's pretty unanimous who we, uh, most people want. But let me just kind of give you a couple real quick. And I mean, I think some people have said it. Vixen. I think Vixen would be great. Um, Vixen would be a character that, man, if we was back in the day, Halle Berry would have that 10 times over and it would have been 10 times better than a uh, um uh, Catwoman or whatever. Um oh, by the way, I also made a little joke as well. Uh the only movies with lot with black superheroes and live action for um for DC. The only ones that they got so far, Steel with Shaq and Catwoman. I'm going to tell you, like I said, I feel like we're owed something. I feel like if this is all we got for black representation and live action in DC, I feel like we need some superhero reparations. I'm just saying, that's all we got? Steel? Did y'all even remember Steel was still there? I'm a lot of people have forgotten Steel even existed. Catwoman is a movie we just tried not to talk about. We ain't got nothing to hang our hat on. I'm not saying you gotta have a Black Panther or nothing, but golly, can we get something a little bit better? So, like I was saying, just, just to kind of go over a couple. You got Vixen. Vixen would be great. She used to be in the Justice League, or she is in the Justice League um great black character um cyborg cyborg could come back people know the name you got the cachet right there uh i would also say that uh nubia i wouldn't mind a nubia uh movie get that to me if wonder woman could work nubia could work i think john stewart could have his own movie as well um john stewart especially if it's true that you want to take the people from the tv series and put them into the movies Let's go. Easy peasy. Who else did I have? Um, you could do Icon. All the milestone characters. Icon would be great. Um, I think you could tell a great story with him, especially if you wanted to do something through slavery. Like, why would you have a superhero black person right during slavery and they let all that stuff happen? That's a great story right there. And of course, I think the number one, which would be silly if they just don't do this and i would put this in the main continuity oh before that before that black lightning you could do black lightning you already had a successful tv show you got the name recognition throw black lightning in there justice league member two but the number one has to be static you got to do static shock and i would say that static shock would be the best way to get the black audience to get the younger crowd and to tap into the same vibes and success as Miles Morales into the Spider-Verse. The same way that that thing has taken off, you give us static, we in there. We're doing watch parties. We're coming, we're bringing the family to come watch it. Static could be, if done right, if done right, and I know this is a bold statement, Static Shock movie could be potentially what Black Panther is to Marvel for DC. It could. It could. And if you have him cross with Black Lightning here and there, I mean, you just got to give me a blackity black movie. Give me a blackity black movie with Static Black Lightning if you want to. You could have a win. Because black audiences will support. They will come out. We made Black Panther popular. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm just glad. Like I said, I was never expecting James Gunn to answer. I was never expecting him to, you know, like, it wasn't about you know, threatening and stuff like that. I already told y'all that stuff don't work with these people. Um, but the fact that he liked it, the fact that I know he's seen it, I know he on notice. So now, now 
the next time he fixed his mouth to go ahead and say, here's the rest of the chapter one. Where the black characters at? Where they at? What's the problem? And they don't like that. They, they, they don't want to be viewed that way. Come on now. Nobody wants to look like they're being discriminatory and all that. Y'all got to understand how social pressure works, man. Y'all just, some of y'all don't know how social pressure works. Y'all think it's all violence and negativity and this. And that. It's not always like that. Sometimes a question can be just as deadly as a sword. Okay. Yeah, just a question. The question can make people sweat, <laughs> you know? So anyway, let me know uh, what black characters would you like to see uh, be the lead of a DC mainstream story? Not not an ensemble, not a team, not a whole bunch. Oh, we have a black person in the corner over there. No, it's that black person's character's movie. And it's the main continuity. Who would you like to see? Let me know. Bakers, thank you so much. Flash, my boy Grant is ready. Sure. Now, I don't know how good Grant would be as a movie star, but at the same time, I'm like, if Ezra can make it, why not Grant too? Well, you know, it'd be all right. Uh, oh, hold on. We got some traction here. Let me get this. Um, oh, we got the homie Low Key. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, for the $25 cash app. My goodness, thank you so much. Sending some love right back to you. Really, really appreciate you on that. Thank you so much to Low Key. Um, what else we got? Reagan, what you got? Static Shock. All right. That needs to be a movie or at least a TV show. That was one of my favorite TV shows growing up. Yes, yeah, same here. I mean, I definitely liked uh, Static Shock. And, and if you go back and watch the show, they kept some things real. They kept them. Th Remember when his friend got shot? You know what I'm saying? Like, they was not holding back. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to do a static shot, let it be blackity black. Let go through all the things that you need to do it. Black writer, black director, get a black co-producer. Something like, I. you don't play with that. Get Reginald Hundlin, you know, to come on in and you, you go hardcore with that. Man, that'd be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, that would be great. I don't want no TV show either. I want I want a movie, then a TV show. I'll do that, you know. But anyway, that's all I got for today, y'all. Um, I want to thank you guys so, so much for taking the time to hang out with me. Really, really appreciate y'all. Um, oh, what you got here? How would I feel about a Mr. Terrific movie? Now, I'm down with a Mr. Terrific movie. Um, the only thing is I need to know the story. Um, I was just talking to my editor about this not too long ago, and I was like, I like Mr. Terrific as a character. He's like one of the smartest top five smartest dudes in the world, in the universe. Love it. He's like the the Reed Richards, you know, of the DCU. I'm I'm fine with Mr. Uh, Terrific. I need a story. What story are you going to tell me about him? Not him jumping across the multiverse with a bunch of other people. No, I need his story him so if that was the case if you can get a good story i haven't seen it yet i'm with it i'll be with it um but anyway we'll see uh thank you guys once again so so much um for all of this for for hanging out with me for being here um and uh yeah it's getting late and i'm already getting tired <laughs> uh but like i said no live on monday uh, I will be watching a little tiny movie, uh, so stay tuned. You never know. I might drop a reaction or something like that. Um, you already know we was Kangs, uh, so I'll be out there to represent the Kang gang all day. Um, I think that's about it, but uh, yeah, so y'all know the routine. Wash your hands, wash your butts. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Enjoy yourself. Stay warm out there because it's crazy or whatever. From what I'm seeing, it's nasty out there right now. Um, but anyway, I appreciate y'all. All right. Peace.